Self-Confidence, the Martial Arts Way by Master Paul Mitchell I would like to dedicate this book to the people whose feelings of self-worth have been slowly stripped away by the constant criticism of family, friends and society. Understand how you feel and hope that the ideas in this book will assist you in improving your self-confidence and become the first step towards finding happiness and a better life. Introduction Self-Confidence, the Martial Arts Way Every parent wants the best for their child. For some, it's material things. For others, it's more mindful gifts like self-confidence, self-control and inner strength. If those internal strengths are what you want for your child, Self-Confidence, the Martial Arts Way is a book you need to read. Martial arts isn't about learning to fight. It's about internal strength with the backup of being able to defend yourself if required. 500,000 children are bullied every week. Over half a million children are bullied each week in Australia. So how do you protect your child? After all, you can't be there, and nor should you, every moment of the day. How do you support your child and offer them a peaceful solution to a better life? Imagine if you could send your child to school, happy in the knowledge that they'll receive a great education, meet new friends, and develop the confidence to be successful in life. Now wouldn't that be refreshing? The inner strength to achieve those ideals doesn't only come from martial arts. Many children have it already, but what about the children who don't? I have dedicated my life to inspiring people of all ages and backgrounds to achieve greatness in their lives through self-belief, ability and physical fitness. I challenge the way people look at martial arts and strongly believe that every student deserves the best experience, support and training possible. My guiding core values are respect, integrity, honour, honesty and humility. This book and the questions it answers will help parents consider whether martial arts is a good choice for their child and how to select the most appropriate class. Self-confidence is a gift for your child. To give your children self-confidence, securing the knowledge that no one can harm or intimidate them, is a priceless gift with the potential to shape their entire lives. Wouldn't you like this for your child? A child's inability to stand up to bullies is generally based on fear for their personal safety. I know that children must confront the bullies and would like nothing more than to stand up to them, but they don't act because of the fear of physical harm that backs the bully's actions. I know this because I have witnessed bullying for over 40 years. All instructors understand that it's about self-confidence. You wouldn't expect your child to surf without first learning how to swim, and so you too can't expect your child to stand up to bullies without first learning self-defense. This book will give you solutions to counter bullying, and with our support we believe your child will increase their self-confidence, boost their self-esteem, and enjoy going to school. There are several key areas in the book that will give you a better understanding of how martial arts can help your child. These include 1. Which martial arts organisation is best for your child? You will better understand costs, location, hard or soft styles, contact or non-contact, class structure and programs available. 2. Strategies to assist your child and everyone else affected by bullying. As instructors, we have a good understanding of how to help your child learn strategies to reduce the incidence of bullying. These strategies will give your child the confidence and skills to cope with the daily conflicts of life. 3. How martial arts will teach your child self-control. Martial arts is not about learning how to fight. It's about learning how to defend yourself should a situation arise. It will make your child more aware of their surroundings and enable them to defuse the situation before it turns confrontational. The main focus of martial arts is to learn how to stay out of fights. 4. Give your child the best experience while learning a martial art. As instructors, we understand that learning a martial art will involve some contact. We know that what you see on TV leaves an impression of violence, but that isn't our purpose. Our goal in martial art is to build self-esteem and self-confidence in every student, not bring them into an environment where they will eventually feel inferior. Self-confidence the martial arts way shows how we achieve this. 5. Different prices, location, days and times to suit all stages of life. This book will assist you in choosing the right centre for your child. Not every instructor can commit to running a full-time centre. That does not mean that you will receive inferior instruction because they only are open twice a week. It may mean that prices will be dearer in a full-time centre due to the overheads involved and additional classes available. 6. 
why a free trial lesson will assess your child's interest and determine a suitable training plan. It is very important to have the correct fit. Your child likes the instructor, you like the instructor, and the instructor believes that they can make a difference to your child. Not every child is ready to start practicing martial arts, but as instructors we make an assessment and discuss the options available at the end of the class. This book tells you why this is important and how to know when the instructor is right for your child. 7. Why having the right instructor is very important in your child's development. When a student begins their journey in martial art, there is so much to learn. It is exciting as you go from beginner to someone with many skills. We have been students ourselves and know how parents and instructors can work together to give your child the best experience. We understand that at times a child might feel that it is too hard or even feel that like they are going backwards. This is a normal reaction. Self-Confidence the Martial Arts Way is the first book that gives you a clear understanding of why martial arts will change the way your child is treated. If we could take a brand new student into the future and show them how a black belt has enhanced their life, they would never miss a class. I have been that student and even though every day it is a challenge to stand up against bullying in all its forms, martial arts has changed my life and it will change your child's life too. Don't wait until it's too late. Read Self-Confidence the Martial Arts Way and understand the lifetime of advantages martial arts gives your child. With this book's help, you'll understand the best approach for your child and ultimately give your child the gift of confidence, a gift for life. The loneliest people are the kindest, the saddest people smile the brightest, the most damaged people are the wisest, all because they do not wish to see anyone else suffer the way they do. Anonymous. Chapter 1. Bullying. Why me? My own story about bullying. I was at school and just six years of age when I received my first punch in the face. It took me by surprise. I couldn't understand why someone would hit me. I thought everybody liked Paul. One day I told a friend that I knew something that he didn't, and he punched me until I told him. On another day we were playing brandings on the wall, and I threw the ball a bit low, and I accidentally hit the person below the belt. That person ran at me, and kneed and punched me, and made my mouth bleed. I always wanted to play on the A team, but seemed to always end up on the B team. I continually found myself placing a lot of effort into any sport that would give me a better chance at being selected to play with the best, but it never happened. In the end, all I did was neglect my studies and receive an average mark in my final exams. When my friends were being bullied, I was never confident enough to help them, even though I felt that I should. After an incident, one became angry with me and said, Why didn't you stick up for me? I said, I didn't know what to do. Looking back now, I think it was because I lacked the confidence to say stop, and I thought that if I said something, they would attack me. I lost a few friends along the way because I did not support them. Bullying continued throughout school, and it is hard to pinpoint why. Looking back now, it was possibly because I was an easy target to unleash their anger, knowing full well that I would forgive them the next day, and sure enough, I did. I unofficially began learning Taekwondo at the age of 15, and bullying stopped when I officially joined my local martial arts centre at the age of 16. I've always had a passion for learning martial arts, and used to watch the local martial instructor teach Taekwondo just down the road from where I lived. I would then come home and practice what I had seen. I found that my confidence began to improve. Then came the day at school when I was involved in a serious confrontation with another student. I used some basic self-defense and, thanks to Taekwondo, defused the situation quickly without injury to either person. When I arrived home and explained to my parents what had happened, they instantly supported me and allowed me to join Taekwondo movement, which has now become a major part of my life. I never really let on to my parents that I had been bullied at school. I've always been a happy person and was never one to hold a grudge. So in those early school years, even on days when I was bullied, I'd come home and make out that everything was okay at school. It took 10 years of bullying before I decided to let my parents know what was happening. When they found out, they supported me straight away. 
Looking back now, my advice to school children of today is not to hide the bullying or any issue, but to talk to your parents. What has martial arts done for me? Quote, Never underestimate what you can accomplish when you believe in yourself. Never give up. Martial arts has increased my self-esteem and self-confidence and given me the strength and courage to stand up for myself. When I was promoted to instructor, it gave me the opportunity to share my knowledge and experience. It has given me discipline, perseverance, self-control and an indomitable spirit to spread the word about the benefits of learning a martial art. Bullying is a cancer. As an instructor for the past 40 years, martial arts has helped me understand that nothing undermines our task of helping a child thrive at school more than the disastrous and soul-destroying impact of bullying. I see it in children we help every day. Our focus is on cultivating the correct mindset in students so that they will have the insight on what they are trying to achieve. We work hard to then give them the determination to make it happen. When a new member joins a martial arts centre, we start them off with small challenges that are achievable. Over time, their mindset becomes strong enough to accept larger challenges. We conduct anti-bullying programs in a number of schools around the country as a way of supporting individuals and giving them confidence. I really enjoy the interaction with students and seeing the change in their self-belief. When students have the confidence to stand up for themselves, they respond and are able to support others too. Sooner or later, most children will be the target of some form of harassment, verbal, physical or psychological. You can't control how other people treat your child, but you can control how your child responds. As a parent, you have an important decision to make. Will you react to the bullying after the fact, or will you start bully-proofing your child today? My black belt grading. I would like to share with you the story of my black belt grading. After five and a half years of preparation, I wondered if I had what was required to promote to black belt. I practiced my pattern hundreds of times and was only required to demonstrate my pattern once. The first free spar was against a senior student who had great technique and more reach. I was going well and then I performed a jumping back kick and placed both feet on his chest. This is considered difficult and my confidence grew immensely. I realized that I had what it takes to be a strong black belt. They sent in more black belts for me to spar but after training seven days a week I was in peak condition and able to take anything that they gave out. The last requirement was board breaking and on my first two attempts at a side kick I was unsuccessful in breaking two boards. Then I heard the master yell out, last time. That was all the encouragement I needed as I thought to myself, I've not come this far to stop now. With that I smashed the board so hard that I broke the front board in three pieces. Turning kick and jumping back when as expected but I hit the hand of the holder for spinning heel and was unsuccessful on breaking a single board. I was only given one more chance to pass my examination. The master instructor asked me to break two boards with an elbow strike. Two weeks prior, I had achieved this break with three boards, so I was lined up with a sense of purpose. I hit the boards with so much passion and power that I not only broke the boards on my first attempt, I knocked both holders onto the ground with my follow-through. The master was so impressed, he yelled out, promoted to first-degree black belt. Everyone in the room celebrated with applause that seemed to last forever. I had achieved my dream of promoted to black belt. Every instructor has been down the same path and if you ask them they will tell you the story of their special day. It is a rewarding challenge to sit for your black belt but as every instructor will tell you there is no greater honour to pass on your knowledge and watch one of your own students achieve their goal whether it is receiving a black belt, a new technique or breaking a board. The greatest battle lies within. I was only 12 when I first saw Bruce Lee on the big screen. I'm not sure what drew him to my attention. Maybe it was that it did not matter what adversity would confront him, he would win in the end. Maybe I was looking for the hero that would subconsciously give me a strength people could see and they would just let me be me. As you know, I started Taekwondo when I was 16 years old, but it was not until later that I found this inspirational poem in a Jet Kune Do guidebook, Volume 1, A Guide to Martial Arts Training with Equipment by Dan Innocento. I read it often and now I repeat it many times to my students. The poem is called Thinking. If you think you are beaten, you are. If you think you dare not, you don't. If you'd like to win but you think you can't, it's almost certain you won't. If you think you will lose, you have lost. But out of this world we find. Success begins with a fellow's will. It's all a state of the mind. If you think you're outclassed, you are. You've got to think high to rise. You've got to be sure of yourself before you can ever win a prize. Life's battles don't always go to the stronger, faster man, 
But sooner or later, the man that wins is the man that thinks he can. Bruce Lee. Life offers many challenges, and to survive, I changed my way of thinking. I came to the conclusion that it's hard to beat a person who never gives up. I would offer that advice to anyone who needs inspiration to get up and carry on. Martial arts is not about fighting, it's about building confidence. Chapter 2. Choose Wisely Story of Jessica Jessica was a seven-year-old girl with one of the loudest shouts she could imagine. Jessica always wanted to break a board. It was a dream goal for her, but where she previously trained, she needed to be older. During the day, I run training sessions in schools. I use a plastic rebreakable board so that students can experience what it is like to break a board like a black belt. In order to add a different feel to the experience, I began using wooden boards cut down from 250mm long to 100mm. When a child breaks a board, I sign Master Paul across the middle of the broken board and suggest that they look up our website www.masterpaul.com.au to find out more information about joining martial arts. Letting students take home their broken board is a great way for them to share the experience with their parents. It was a grading night in MacArthur and there were about 70 students who had applied for promotion. Shivan Shakta John from the St George area had added a new dynamic to the grading with his attendance on the night. During the grading there was a section where students were performing martial arts techniques against each other. All I could hear was Jessica and Chief Instructor John kicking and shouting at each other, so I moved a little closer. Jessica was matching Chief Instructor John's kick for kick and shout for shout. It was amazing. And all of a sudden, Chief Instructor John lost his voice and Jessica stole the show. I said, Jessica, today you were going to break a board. The look on her face was priceless. I held the board just above waist height and asked Jessica to perform a side kick. The first attempt had great technique, balance and accuracy, but lacked spirit, determination and a key up. A martial arts shout. I said, Jessica, I want to see the side kick you gave Chief Instructor John. Jessica looked at me and said, oh, that kick. Jessica lined up and let it go. Jessica broke the board with all her heart and soul. The crowd roared. Jessica's smile lit up the room and then she looked at me and bowed with respect. I had made her dream of breaking a board come true. I said, take the board over to Grandpa Wayne who is blind so he can feel your accomplishment. Jessica sat on his lap kissed him repeatedly on the cheek while Grandpa Wayne felt the board and congratulated Jessica. When Jessica returned, she handed the board back to me. I said to her, that is yours to keep and after grading, I will sign the board. It was a busy night and regrettably, I forgot to sign the board. The next day I received the phone call from Wayne explaining that he had the board at his place. I dropped everything and went straight over to sign the board. We sat quietly together and then I said, this is not good enough. We can make this a memorable achievement for her. Jessica know that I will be her news of the week if she'd like me to, and I'll come to her school and train her class. The following Friday, Jessica's mum, Jody, and I went to the school and trained 25 children. Jessica made me feel very proud and honoured to be there on this day. The teacher asked Jessica, who is this person? Jessica replied in a loud voice, This is Master Paul. The teacher asked the second question, And who is Master Paul? Jessica replied, Master Paul is the best Taekwondo instructor in the world. Well, what could I say? I was speechless. We had a lot of fun. At the end, Jessica once again broke a board in front of her school friends and made them step back when she let go with a martial arts shout. It was a great day. Location. I'm constantly asked which martial arts should I join and why. Martial arts is one of the most effective ways to gain self-confidence while building a fit, strong and healthy body. My first piece of advice is to find a suitable school nearby where you can attend a trial class. If your child enjoys it, then find out days and times that would best fit into your daily schedule without affecting homework and other commitments. Most schools will offer one or two free classes to help you decide. In relation to the best martial art for you, it is more important that you find a good school with qualified instructors than a specific martial art. Look for martial art that offers both sporting and traditional self-defense aspects of training. Why martial arts? Martial arts training is a great way to develop discipline and respect, as well as build character and a positive attitude to life. Another great benefit is that you gain awareness and self-defense skills through the study of martial arts. Given that many young people are confronted with cases of violence and bullying, martial arts offers the most effective method to avoid and deal with potential threatening situations. The focus is on gaining the confidence to control situations and avoid confrontation, using physical defense skills only as a last resort. Martial arts students tend to be fit, confident, highly skilled individuals, 
often a target too difficult for attackers and bullies. Safe for children. Finally, martial arts offers a safe and enjoyable way to gain great skills and most importantly, develops a strong character to make the right choice in difficult situations. It focuses on individual strength and offers your children many benefits, both physical and mental, to help them reach their full potential. Class structure. Most martial arts will offer a family-friendly martial arts center that has something for everyone. You'd be surprised by how many families train together. Families had a great time working out together and the kids love it. They love the workouts, the fun and making new friends. If you're looking for something healthy and active to do with your kids, child just one visit and you'll understand why families all over the world do martial arts together. Children too. At selected centres, children can start as young as two and three years old and mum or dad just join the children on the floor, participating as they are able and willing. These classes provide a positive and safe environment to explore martial arts and are fun doing all kinds of physical exercise. When they reach four and five years of age, children are also taught basic martial arts skills and self-defense principles such as personal space and using their voice as a weapon. It is an excellent intermediate step between the home environment and preschool or kindergarten. Confidence at a young age. When your child reaches primary school, it is amazing what a child with self-confidence can do. Self-confidence develops through setting goals, striving for excellence and accomplishing what they set out to do. In many instances, they acquire skills they never thought possible, unlocking their own potential and giving them a positive outlook that can last a lifetime. Better grades. Unlike team sports, there are no bench warmers in class. Every child participates and every child is important. Independent studies have shown that martial arts students have better grades and get into less trouble. There are leadership programs that reward students for getting good grades in school and for acting responsible at home. Responsibility is the key because we know how important it is that every student learns the right purpose for learning martial art. They are all taught to never use their skills in an inappropriate manner and how to avoid trouble. If a dangerous situation should arise, your child is taught a realistic way to stay safe from harm. As your child matures into a young adult, there is nothing better than knowing how to take care of yourself in any situation. All martial arts practice effective and modern self-defense techniques. As your child matures, there's an emphasis on fitness conditioning while learning self-defense. You can be assured of receiving top quality instruction from a fully trained professional instructor whose number one priority is helping your child achieve goals and increasing self-confidence. Different styles of martial arts. Full contact. As the name implies, full contact is where punches and kicks are thrown with full force to defeat an opponent in competition, or it is introduced into a class structure as a prerequisite in learning realistic unarmed combat if attacked outside of the training center. In full contact sparring, the aim of the competitive match is either to knock the opponent out or force the opponent to submit. Kurikushin Karate emphasizes realistic combat, physical toughness, and practicality in its training curriculum. In the knockdown karate competition, hand and elbow strikes to the head and neck are prohibited. However, kicks to the head, knee strikes, punches to the upper body, and kicks to the inner and outer leg are permitted. Grappling and throwing are generally not allowed in these tournaments. Japanese and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu places more emphasis on throwing, immobilizing and pinning, joint locking, choking and strangling techniques. The main difference between both styles is that Brazilian is basic competitive sport where Japanese Jiu-Jitsu focuses on the art of self-defense. A further difference in the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu focuses on ground techniques to control the opponent while Japanese Jiu-Jitsu focuses on the stand-up techniques. Mixed martial arts MMA is full contact combat that allows a wide variety of fighting techniques from a mixture of traditional and non-traditional styles. The rules allow the use of strikes and grappling techniques while standing and on the ground. Such competitions allow martial arts of different backgrounds to compete. These are just a few of the contact styles that are available and when supervised effectively can provide an ideal environment for any child who would like a little bit more rough and tumble. Non-contact or semi-contact. Non-contact sparring is where a competitor will pull their punch or kick before contact is made. Semi-contact, usually referred to as touch contact, is where the opponents spar each other and show accuracy and control techniques. These competitive tournaments cater for men, women and children of all different martial arts backgrounds and were established to give people further experiences in their own style. 
National All Styles Tournament, NAS, is one of the most successful tournament scenes in the Southern Hemisphere and provides an environment where people of all martial arts styles can compete in the one arena. In the case of point sparring, the aim of the competition is not to knock out your opponent, but to rely on speed, accuracy and effective technique to score points. There is normally a referee in the centre of the ring and two judges on the outside looking for legal and illegal techniques. When an opponent is leading by 8 points, reaches 15 points, or one is disqualified due to illegal techniques or too much contact, the winner is decided. In the case of a draw, an additional minute is added and the competitor that scores the next point is declared the winner. If no point is scored, the centre referee decides the winner. In the case of continuous sparring, a referee monitors fouls to control the match. At the end of the bout, all judges put up their selection and the winner is decided. A round lasts approximately one and a half minutes. If a competitor fouls four times against an opponent, he is disqualified and the opponent is declared the winner. If you're concerned about starting your child with a contact martial art, then I suggest you look for a style that offers light, medium contact. Styles and soft styles. To many non-martial artists, references to hard and soft styles may be puzzling, but simply put, the differences lie in the movements. Both karate and taekwondo are often linear in their form, a traditional sequence of set moves, performed with crisp movements. Chinese Kung Fu styles are usually referred to as soft styles. The circular motions of Kung Fu forms gives them a visually graceful or softer appearance, especially when many of the movements flow from one to another. This is not to say that hard styles such as Karate or Taekwondo are more powerful martial arts than Kung Fu and other soft styles. The term soft is a bit misleading because the power from circular kung fu moves is often hidden. Circular moves can generate just as much power as linear ones. It is often just a personal choice, or even the latest movie when it comes to encouraging children to join. I have conducted seminars with masters of different styles that all have something to offer. You just need to get a feel for what would suit your passion. I guarantee you won't be disappointed with your decision if you focus on technique and not just promoting through the ranks to achieve a black belt. Take your time and enjoy every grading and every promotion. Quote, it is not how fast you get there. It is not what is on the other side. It is the journey towards black belt, which should be the focus. Instructor's role. As martial arts instructors, we have unique challenges in our responsibilities towards our students. It is no longer enough that we are proficient in kicking, punching, throwing and twisting joints. These days, instructors are good leaders and mentors to our students as we guide them in their martial arts development. The goal of every instructor is to produce students who can carry on the tradition of their system and their legacy. However, today we are faced with young students who are often without a father figure in their home or lack a proper role model. Sometimes an instructor's leadership and mentoring skills are the only thing that separates a child who may someday be success from one who will continue to fill our prisons. Your child can, not can't. Instructors understand that we need to lift people to higher levels. They show them why they can instead of why they can't. They guide them to be great people and not just great fighters. They give people something to think about rather than just a good training. Feelings are wonderful things, but you can't live by them alone. You must also have some life skills. I'm a student, an instructor and a parent. All these roles have their challenges and at times it is overwhelming. What keeps me going is the difference I can make to someone's life. When you can get a person to achieve the unachievable, it gives them strength to accept any challenge. Over time and with your support, your child will be able to share their knowledge and make a difference not only to their lives, but to the lives of others. Results Driven The Ideal Training Centre is a great place for a student to learn some of life's important lessons. These can include discipline, respect, determination, indomitable spirit, honour, honesty and humility. They'll also enjoy the social interaction, building friendships and ultimately increase their self-esteem and self-confidence to deal with the daily conflicts of life. How do you get them working at home? If your child has started martial arts and you hear the instructor say, practice at home, we all know what's going to happen. So, what you can do to encourage your child to train at home. Give them a reason. Firstly, you'll need to know why your child wants to learn a martial art or why you believe your child should learn. No matter what the reason, there is need to be a connection between happiness and results. As will be mentioned later, there will be an amount of pain associated with training to receive a desired pleasure. But through supporting your child, these hurdles can be overcome. 
If training is just for fun, then practice at home will possibly only happen through pressure from yourself, which will ultimately end up with your child becoming unhappy. If your child has a dream of being like a famous movie star, Jackie Chan, Jet Li, or even their instructor, you will find that this is the time to encourage them. Just remember not to let your dreams be the driving force behind supporting their dreams. Join in yourself. Another way of assisting your child in training at home is to take more of an active role in their training. I'll give you a better understanding of your role in martial arts later, but simply put, parents can start training with their child. When we mention this to parents, we get the look, followed by, I couldn't do that, that's too hard for me, or I'm just too old. All we do is smile and explain that the majority of people feel this way, but more parents are joining with their children every day. Once you join with your child, you will gain a better understanding of what your child is going through. And because you'll encounter similar challenges, you'll be able to assist your child from an adult perspective. More ways to get them to train at home. Now that you're on board, here are some of the other suggestions to help your child practice at home. One, take training outside of the home as some children will associate training at home as a chore. Go to the park or beach your child enjoys and get them to do a bit of practice. 2. Let your child become the teacher and help you become better and make it fun. 3. Look for improvements and reward them with praise. If I could explain how simple it can be to encourage a child, I'm sure you'll understand. My child was learning how to play the guitar at the school and I knew that one child in the group was not very good at all. But at the end of class, the teacher made a special reference to the child in front of the group and told everyone that Samuel played the best G note that he had ever heard. I could see that Samuel was very happy when he left the class. At the end of the class, I asked the teacher, was it that good? He explained, as a teacher, you need to find something good in everyone to inspire greatness. I took that lesson and now use it in my everyday life. Pain or pleasure? When your child first starts, they will find it quite hard, of course, and will undoubtedly struggle with most of the techniques. Here's what to do. Let them know this is normal, and that their skills will slowly improve with work. Don't doubt your decision to encourage your children towards a future in martial arts, because as they progress through the ranks, they'll begin to understand how balance, power, timing and technique work together. The sense of accomplishment will not only increase their self-esteem and self-confidence, but it will give them the mindset to accomplish future goals. In martial arts, we tend to cooperate with our partners to learn techniques because the end result should be successful. Training hard with our partners too early will have short-term results, but long-term cooperation will develop more effective techniques. In truth, both kinds of training have their positive and negatives, and I think you'll have to draw the best you can from whichever is present at the time. I've been through both types of training, and through perseverance, I have found my passion in life. A lot of parents want their children to do martial arts because it looks cool, and they feel it will really help with the child's confidence. It may even solve those bullying problems, but for some reason they procrastinate about joining their child with their local martial arts centre. Anthony Robbins, American Life Coach, Self-Help author and motivational speaker explains in an interview with John Graddon, martial arts instructor, why parents and children hesitate in starting a martial art. One reason could be due to an understanding of what drives all human behaviour, is the need to avoid pain or the desire to obtain pleasure. So as a parent we want to send our child to martial arts, but we also don't want our child to get hurt. What you want to do is not wait until it's too late. Don't wait until your child has experienced lack of confidence, but invest now in learning a martial art. Robin looks at it as a two-step forward and a one-step back problem. His thinking is that, like most things in life, the tough times can deter you or your child, but don't let them, because you'll eventually get a confident child. You as an adult undoubtedly understand that there is some degree of pain associated with working hard at anything, including martial arts. You'll also realise, and hopefully impact to your children, that unless we go through the short-term pain, you'll never get the big pleasure. Start your child early. There are real benefits to starting your child early on the martial arts journey. Robert's thinking is this. Martial arts offers people a way of life, but people are concerned about a change in their way of life and worry that it may turn them into a different person. Do you feel like that yourself occasionally, that you might change your identity by taking on a new endeavour? If you're thinking of doing a martial art as an adult, it can be an issue. You will change into a more positive, more able person, that is true, but not so for your child. Expose your child initially to a class and give them a taste. As your child develops mastery, self-esteem and power, 
The ability to impact and garner respect among their peers becomes a way of life that they become used to. But as Robin points out, they do need to get past the initial stage of pain. It is difficult, but the rewards are there. As a child begins their journey in martial arts, the amount of patterns to learn seems daunting. Robinson Gradden feel this is an exciting time for children as they see the results of their work going from a beginner to someone with many skills. Then comes the plateau. Martial requires discipline and it does not seem like you are growing at the same rate. Robinson Gradden explained this plateau with a tennis analogy. In the first few weeks of learning tennis, you master the art of seeing and hitting the ball back over the net, maybe even able to serve reasonably well. But soon you reach a point where you don't seem to improve that much, even though you've now been playing for months. You're working hard, but seeing no improvements. You ask your coach for advice and suggest a new grip and a different foot stance. You now have to work hard to unlearn your simple skills and apply a more complex way of hitting the ball. Again, your hard work seems to take time, but eventually, bang, you're hitting the ball really well and you've mastered a different stroke. It is the same in martial arts. As your child reaches a certain level, he or she will be struggling with the plateau and even going backwards as they learn more complex techniques. What happens now? Robin suggests we have three choices. One, give it time and go through a little painful embarrassment to move forward. Two, because you're not receiving the same pleasure as you did before, you could return to your old style and not mature as a martial artist. Three, or you could leave. Mastery takes time. Mastery is something you need to understand as a parent, watching your child go through the martial arts learning curve. It will be coaching and adjusting in the class and you're required to listen at home and gently reinforce the idea that hard work eventually gets rewarded. We seem to want an instant hit these days, but that's just not possible with martial arts. As Robin suggests, your child will not be alone as the instructor has been there before and understands your child's pain. If your child and you listen to the advice, there will be guidance you'll have to trust the instructor. Your children can do what they want. As adults, we realize that we have the power inside to do whatever we want, but it takes strength to make a decision and follow it through. What wonderful life skills. Martial arts can show your child that we have to decide what we're up for, what we're committed to. One of Robin's major theme is indeed this, that we need to decide that the past does not equal the future. Just because we have tried things in the past does not mean that this time we won't be successful. What he is saying is don't worry. Your child will still have fun and will almost decide for themselves that he or she needs to commit to the mastery. As instructors, we encourage the children not to dabble so when they reach the plateau, they don't give up, but they will get the reward if they only continue. Robbins often talks about this in his seminars and continues the idea into the interview with Graddon. Every great success in any type of career is achieved by someone that has gone beyond. It tells us that life puts up a brick wall and asks who is going to push through it. Martial arts will teach a child to be the person who hits the wall two or three times and doesn't give up. Martial arts will show them that they need to be the person who keeps on going, either around or under or over, who never gives up. As simplistic as it sounds, we adults know these things, but we don't know how to execute them. Martial arts will teach your children those life skills in abundance. So take that step forward and talk to your local instructor. Their role is to support your child through times of pain and celebrate with them in times of pleasure. If a child cannot learn from the way that we teach, we must teach in a way that a child can learn. Shin Atemi, UK. Chapter 3. Inside the Dojang. Story of Tui. The special bond that can develop between a student and their instructor can last a lifetime. It is built on loyalty, dedication, and respect, but most of all, it's built on supporting each other in difficult times. I remember when Tui, mother, and Tate daughter first came to our dojang at Carlton. Tui did not join in straight away, but was very supportive while her daughter progressed over the years and reached the level of blue belt. On one occasion, when Tui arrived with her daughter, I looked across to say hello and noticed that Tui had a black eye. I did not ask her what had happened. All I said in a firm voice was, it's unacceptable, so what are you going to do about it? Tui said, I'm joining. Tui took off her shoes and lined up with all the other students. I said, chumbi, which meaning ready position. Horse riding stance, middle section punch, sija, meaning begin. Tui formed a great stance, a strong punch, and gave a loud shout. I grinned because it reminded me of my first day when I started. It was the beginning of a strong and lasting relationship. 
Over the next few months, Tui's confidence grew, and when I asked her, how is everything going, Tui replied, a lot better now that I don't let people treat me with disrespect. It was very satisfying to know that I'd given a young lady a new start in life. About 14 months later, Tui came up to me and said, I've completed an active after school coaching AASC course today. I smiled at her and said, that's great. Tui added, I focus my answers on becoming a martial arts coach. I said, do you want to become an instructor one day? Tui answered by saying, it would be an honor. I was stunned and proud because I've not heard those words for many years. Tui started training four hours per day and with the help of a daughter who was then a brown belt black tip, one grade away from black belt. And with my guidance, Tui progressed to a first degree black belt with the respect from all senior instructors. I was the instructor for Hurstville and Carlton at the time when a sad event occurred in my life. Unfortunately, my child's mum passed away with cancer. One of the first people to support me was Tui who told me to go home and support my children. She would take over both venues for as much time as I needed. I was speechless, but humbly said, thank you. The support network exists in all martial arts centers. We all work towards building relationships with each other and our students. And many times, these are relationships which last forever. Expectations. Our aim is to help every new member enjoy learning martial arts in a safe environment and develop confidence which we believe is the key to achieving in all areas of life. It also offers many physical benefits such as increased fitness and flexibility. I believe it's something every child can benefit from, especially if they start early. Training sessions are open to everyone, from individuals to families, to come and watch and get a better understanding of what we do. We also encourage people to trial us free of charge and obligation. You're more than welcome to bring your child along to a class and let them see for themselves how it all works. We understand that they'll be shy at first and we go to all lengths to make them feel welcome. Whether you yourself want to get in shape or achieve another personal goals or whether you'd like your child to be a part of something that generates wonderful life skills, we provide the experience expertise and a friendly supportive environment to help people realize their goals. Anyone who has the enthusiasm to learn martial arts is welcome to join. Ages range from 5 to, well, you set the limit. I've had a student who is 73 and still going strong. The respect, discipline, self-confidence, hand-eye coordination and a healthy lifestyle that martial art training promotes becomes a valuable asset to any student. It is a great way to improve a child's fitness, concentration, flexibility, strength, self-confidence and self-awareness, all of which are wonderful skills to have for a school-aged child. Martial Arts Lessons Each training session runs for approximately one hour. This can vary depending on age, rank and physical ability. Most dojangs will have classes at times that are more suited towards children. In order to help students improve and to keep the classes interesting, the content of each class is different. However, as an indication, a typical training session in martial arts may include elements such as warm-up and stretching, introduction and practice of techniques, set patterns may vary from style to style, contact and non-contact sparring may vary from style to style, self-defense techniques, strength and cardio workout, focus mitts and shield training, weapons training may vary from style to style. Examinations. Gradings can be held up to five times a year. A grading is where a student is put forward for promotion and participates in an examination in front of the master examiner. Each student should only attend grading with a recommendation by their instructor. There is no pressure for students to grade. However, all students are encouraged to attend gradings when they are recommended. First class. Have your child wear something comfortable that they can exercise in, such as a tracksuit pants or shirts and a t-shirt. Depending on the style, they may be asked to train in bare feet or suitable footwear. Have them bring a water bottle and a towel. At most training centres, the first training session is complimentary and obligation free. Talk to the class instructor as they will be keen to meet you and your child to find out more about your expectations and experience. In most martial arts classes, they will be shouting on certain techniques during activities and sparring, usually on every attack. There is no pressure for you to shout if you feel uncomfortable. However, there are good reasons why most martial arts styles shout. Shouting, because it shows spirit, allows you to focus total concentration into the technique, focuses timing, breathing, movement and power, ensures the breath is not held during exertion, 
surprises or intimidates an opponent or attacker, contributes to the overall spirit and intensity of the class. Not every martial art shouts during training, and that is all right, as not every style requires shouting. So whatever style you choose, your child will be taught to focus on performing correct technique. This will benefit their progression throughout their training. Quote, Children have never been very good at listening, but great at imitating. James A. Baldwin Role Models We are all role models in some way, shape or form and at some time or another. We advise our friends, we teach our children and we educate ourselves. As you can see, our knowledge and experience can help people and in turn we become well respected in our network of family and friends. But what makes a martial arts instructor rise up and become an extraordinary role model? The answer is outcomes. We start by teaching with passion to infect your children with enthusiasm and set them on the path of effective learning. Then we focus on effective teaching methodologies and strategies to achieve better outcomes for your child and the instructor. As instructors, we understand the need to lead by example. If we talk about loyalty, then we are loyal. If we preach about health and fitness, then we are healthy and fit. And if we are instructing our students to never stop learning, then we must do the same. This positive learning environment changes your child's outlook to better enable them to deal with the daily conflicts of school. At the end of the day, an instructor is focused on getting your child to think for themselves. By teaching your child to think critically, he is empowering your child through leadership. Lessons learnt. Let's turn to the movies to illustrate the point I'm trying to make, and specifically the two Karate Kid movies being The Karate Kid 1984 with Daniel LaRusso and the 2010 remake with the same name starring Jaden Smith. Both children were bullied and could not see their way out of the situation. Both were increasingly unhappy because of the weight of the bullying and the feeling that their lives were out of balance because of it. Both had instructors who guided rather than told, and both learnt powerful lessons by instigating their training in ways that they could be proud of. In the final tournament scene in The Karate Kid 1984, Daniel has his leg damaged and is in the change room with Mr Miyagi, his instructor and friend. Daniel is in great pain but says, if I don't go back into the ring, they now know that they got the best of me. As he is asking Mr Miyagi to fix his leg, and Mr Miyagi was reluctant to let him go back out, Daniel says, if I don't, I will not have balance. Not with them, not with Ali, his girlfriend, and most of all, not with himself. Aiden in the remake also grappled with a damaged leg and is asked by Mr. Hahn whether he wants to go back in. Jaden in reply says, I want to go back into the ring because I am still scared. All Mr. Hahn is concerned about is his safety. In the end, Jaden says, no matter what happens to me tonight, when I leave, I don't want to be scared anymore. In the end, both Daniel and Jade are assisted back into the ring to fight. They both stand up against injustice to gain respect. I'm sure you would agree that a balanced lifestyle is one of the most important factors in happiness. Accountability. How will your child progress through the ranks? In all martial arts schools, promotion through the colour and black belt ranks is done in front of a panel of highly ranked instructors or by the head instructor of the organisation. Attending your grading is considered a privilege rather than an automatic right. This privilege to participate in grading at any level is earned by regular attendance, dedication to training and correct attitude. Students strictly adhere to the requirements of each grade and before the student can be tested, it's important that the minimum requirement of training sessions and training times as stated at each level are met. For example, a beginner student should have trained for a minimum of one to three months before grading. Making students accountable is a great life skill as it allows your child to set and achieve goals. Gradings are held up to five times a year and it is a good way to bring students together to support and compete against each other in a well-supervised environment. As a junior student progresses through the belt system, they will be encouraged to assist other members with basic technique in kicks, stances and forms. This will reinforce technique and teach them the values of patience, humility and respect. There is nothing more rewarding than helping another person achieve greatness through your encouragement and support. Over time, a student student may be rewarded by officially promoted to an assistant instructor. Each style of martial art has its own style of rewarding a child for correct behaviour in class, improvements in schoolwork and respect for their parents. We understand that it is important to recognise improvements even if they are small and to be consistent in our endeavours to inspire your child to keep progressing inside and outside of the training centre. Rules and regulations. Every environment with more than a few people needs its rules and regulations in order for it to function properly. 
A Danjang is no different. You also have a few other elements added in to further our aims of guiding children towards respect for others. When your child begins their training at your local centre, they will need to follow some rules and regulations that provide an environment where everyone can train together with respect, integrity, honour, honesty and humility. List the below are some examples of rules and regulations that you may come across. Membership application forms. Your first step as a parent will usually be to submit an application form. This will generally be available from your instructor and will probably be required prior to your first formal training. If under 18 years of age, a parent or guardian must sign the form, please note this is a legal document and should be read carefully and signed. As an example, here is a training etiquette for Taekwondo. Number one, always bow when entering and leaving the hall, heels together, toes V-shape at 45 degrees, fists beside your thighs, and your body should be bent at 45 degrees. Two, grade four and above to bow to every senior belt before class starts. This is a sign of respect. Three, while waiting for training to start, practice your pattern, technique, or stretch. Do not run around the hall or talk. Four, no talking while the instructor is giving instructions. Save conversation for outside the hall before and after class. Five, do not ever instruct another student unless the instructor puts you in charge. Six, when adjusting your uniform, do not face the flag, a black belt, or the instructor. Seven, in sparring, the junior belt always moves first. If both are the same belt, then neither may move first. Eight, if your partner is going too hard for you at any given time, let them know. If they do not back off, then report this to your instructor. Nine, if you're injured before, during, or after class, then report this injury to the instructor straight away. Do not leave the hall without informing the instructor. Ten, never argue with the instructor when corrected in class time. If given advice, wait until after class to question this advice. Eleven, do not slouch or lean against the walls when asked to sit down. Always sit with legs crossed and back straight. This is not a time for conversation as it is still class time. 12. Please remove all jewelry before beginning class. And 13. Please ensure toenails and fingernails are kept short and neatly trimmed. Late arrivals. If you arrive late, you must inform the instructor that you are present and they will decide when it's time for you to join into class. Leaving early. Instructors should be informed before the class starts of the time you need to leave. Children need to have their parents or guardian pick them up from the training hall. Training fees. Training fees are due by the 10th day of the month. If you require more time, then you can make arrangements with your instructor. Blood. All cuts and abrasions that are bleeding have to be covered immediately. There's a first aid kit with every instructor. Pregnancy. Before commencement of training, you'll need to inform the instructor if you are aware of your pregnancy. Otherwise, as soon as you know, you should inform the instructor and also follow any medical advice. Once you are pregnant, we recommend no sparring or other contact in the class that may affect your condition. Injuries. All serious injuries are reported to the instructor as soon as the incident has occurred. If you have a pre-existing injury, you must inform the instructor so that the correct advice can be given. Attendance. All students who are dropped off at the training centre must be brought into the centre. After class, all students who are waiting for their parents or guardians are to remain in the training centre until the parents collect their children. Jewelry. All jewelry is to remove before training unless approved by the instructor. Physical disabilities. All disabilities should be stated on your application for membership form. For example, back injury, knee problems. Asthma sufferers should carry Ventolin at all times, even if you have not had an attack for some time. If Ventolin is required, then you'll need a 10-minute break before returning to training please inform the instructor. Diseases. All diseases should report to the instructor. Infectious diseases that pose a risk to any of the other members will need to be cleared and medical certificate may be required. Examinations. Gradings can be held up to five times a year. A grading is where a student is put forward for promotion and participates in the examination in front of the master examiner. Each student should only attend grading with a recommendation by their instructor. If they do not reach a level of attainment on the day, they'll be given a continuance and be asked to reset the test during class or at the next grading at no cost. Character building, the three R's. We're going to look at the three R's as they pertain to martial arts, respect, responsibility, and relationships. Number one, respect. Ranking system. Every martial art will have some sort of ranking system, whether it be in the form of a belt, 
a sash, or an armband. For a new member, it's a great indication of the other member's achievements, and if need assistance, then that person with a higher rank should have a better understanding of the techniques. Rank is a good indicator of a student's dedication. A good grading syllabus and examination ethic will test this to some extent, but we must all understand that rank is not the only result. As instructors, we focus on developing a person's character and deliver the message that the belt is a symbol of recognition for their efforts, indicating where their current skill is or should be. Some people get confused with the colour system, so here's the significance of each colour of the belt in Taekwondo. White belt signifies innocence, a new student who has no previous knowledge of Taekwondo. Yellow belt signifies the earth in which a plant sprouts and takes root as the student's foundation of Taekwondo is being laid. Green belt signifies the plant's growth as the student's Taekwondo skill begins to develop. Blue belt signifies the heaven towards which the plant matures into a towering tree as the student's training in Taekwondo progresses. Brown belt signifies the tree taking solid root in the earth as technique becomes increasingly more proficient. Black belt, opposite of white, therefore signifying maturity and proficiency in Taekwondo, also indicates the student's imperviousness to darkness and fear. Achievement of rank should be considered as a side effect of training and not a goal. What we try to encourage in children is the idea that the true goal is personal development, to be the best that we can be at whatever rank or level we may obtain. Ego. Leave it at the door. We all human and our ego likes to win, even in young children. Ego does anything it can, even plots and plans to win, so as to avoid experience anything else. As instructors, we try to build an environment that allows a person's ego to remain intact. We challenge ourselves and our students and constantly look for new and achievable goals with each lesson. Quote, If you want to learn things that others do not know, you must be willing to do things that other people do not do. Being involved in martial arts becomes something special as your child grows in maturity. Most people are not willing to strive for extraordinary Martial arts can be the perfect environment for extraordinary achievements and your child is encouraged to grow a little with each lesson. We show them how not to settle for ordinary, to work, to strive towards a goal, and how hard work has rewards. The less attached we are to needing to win, being right, being comfortable or safe, and the more willing we are to take some risks, the more things we will discover about ourselves and the more our ego will be left at the door. Giving propagates a chain reaction. A lot of children understand the concept of giving, but prefer to receive because it gives them more pleasure. Think of Christmas when you were a child. There's nothing wrong with receiving, per se. But we also reinforce a very clear message that giving is more important than receiving, and that it is important that we learn to be givers. We will give a child responsibilities in class that involve them helping other students, it may be as simple as holding a piece of equipment or fixing up a junior student's technique. All have the same purpose of giving up some of their training time for the betterment of another student. We believe that the seed we plant now in a young child can cause them to be more generous and we believe this starts a chain reaction. This way we can teach children that when they give, they give from the heart and don't give to receive. 2. Responsibility Behaviour in class. When a child begins learning martial arts, we understand that they may experience a sense of anxiety and stress while they are making adjustments. This is normal, and in the beginning you may not see results straight away, but improvements will definitely develop over time. Some of these changes will include a boost in self-esteem and self-confidence. Martial arts will create a structured routine, an opportunity to be with other children, a chance to experience accomplishments, such as moving up in belts and praise. In some organisations, wooden or plastic boards are broken by children as another way of increasing their self-esteem and encourage them to continue improving. It will also give a child an energy boost, which will improve the behaviour for a while. But from my experience, the lessons learned in class need to be repeated at home. Just remember that if a child is in a household where there may be a new sibling, 
parents arguing, grandparents sick, or even just starting school, we may need to make allowances for their behaviour. If we all work together at school, home and martial arts, we'll be providing your child with a positive environment and the best opportunity for success. The respect, self-control, self-confidence and life skills are great. Your child will not only benefit from learning a martial art, but in some family classes you'll be able to train alongside your child and develop a bond, a bond for life. Passing on our knowledge. As students, we have a responsibility to listen to our instructor and follow not only the syllabus, but also his wisdom. We have all heard of Chinese whispers, and metaphorically speaking, martial arts are similar. If any martial arts wants to stay successful, it relies on its instructors to pass on their knowledge in an understandable way so that the message is received correctly. As instructors, we are constantly reaching for perfection of spirit and dedication to excellence in technique and mind. This is a responsibility we hold. Hopefully through our guidance, all students will follow a similar path in everything they do, inside and outside of the training centre. 3. Relationships. Instructor-student bond. There is a bond that develops over the years between an instructor and a student, and it can last a lifetime. Even after the student has moved towards other goals, the bond can still live on. It took me over five years to achieve first degree black belt, with my initial training under the guidance of Grandmaster Chon Yun Ri. During my time, Master Reed played a significant part in my self-development as a person and a martial artist, and later as an instructor. I remember that through hard training, I gained his respect, trust and admiration, and will always remember the times we spent together. Most of all, I've always sought to emulate my original instructor. He never expected the student to do something that he could not achieve, and he empowered his students to think for themselves. Grandmaster Chon Yun Ri ultimately was a great role model. When I first started teaching in 1983, I began my instruction under Master Chon Chul Ri, Grandmaster Yun Ri's brother. It was a humble beginning with significant challenges. After my hall was demolished early on, I was forced to teach my six students across the road in the park. However, as my experience grew, so did my membership, and after 23 years, I built two regions and over 300 students. After 27 years, I was encouraged to follow my own path and open Sydney Taekwondo, now called United Taekwondo. And using the lessons taught to me from my instructor, I now enjoy passing on my knowledge and experience to every student who wishes to learn. It might take time for your children to find the right martial arts style and instructor, but that's alright. It is a love for martial arts that will in the end ensure that they are winners. Environmental Impact in a martial arts environment, your child will be surrounded by other students striving to reach their own personal goals. It could be a black belt, confidence, or even just a new friendship. No matter what their goal is, every instructor will help the student in the right direction. And over time, perseverance will be the key to success. Instructors realise that rewarding a student for good behaviour and great technique only goes so far in having a large impact on a student's life. What most centres provide is a reward system for good behaviour at home and for improvements in schoolwork. This may be done by giving your child a certificate, a uniform badge or a medal for a major award. Tournaments are also great as students from different arts get to compete on a level playing field. They meet many new friends and become part of a bigger martial arts world. This camaraderie is invaluable in showing your child other children their age who are achieving good things and they see the work and passion really do pay off. Once your child has competed for a while, you will find that the relationship between competitors is awesome and they look forward to the next challenge. You often hear them telling each other, see you when we meet again. At most national all styles, NAS tournaments, martial arts arena, there are over 40 different clubs competing during the rounds and state finals and over 100 clubs competing from around Australia for the national titles. These are normally held once a year in Queensland, New South Wales or Victoria. It is a prestigious event and the participation of parents and coaches make it memorable. Of course, not every student who competes wins the ultimate prize, but instructors work hard to position every student so that no matter how new or raw a student is, everyone wins. In the junior age ranking at NAS, everyone receives a certificate of participation. Overall, martial arts provides a strong environment and by following a structured program, your child will progress through the ranks, 
be given responsibilities and build friendships based on respect. Not only will your child learn new fitness skills, they'll also develop a new way of looking at the world around them, one that is based on respect, patience and humility. He who angers you conquers you. Elizabeth Kenny. Chapter 4. Aggression or Self-Control We all react. The key is how we react. Martial arts teaches calm self-control that seeks to diffuse tension, not inflame it. Story of Issa In 2006, I began trialling a personal development program using Taekwondo as a way of tackling the ever-increasing risk of students becoming victims of bullying. The first program was designed especially for stage 3 students of Carlton Public School, which is located in Sydney. The main philosophy of the program was to increase the student's self-esteem and self-confidence and encourage positive attitudes and behaviours. Each week, the students would receive theory lessons in anti-bullying and personal development had the opportunity to practice what they had learned during the Taekwondo lesson. Originally, the school had organised five lessons to some of its male pupils, but the program was so successful it was offered to boys and girls from the years three to six. The class was always full and about 30 children enjoyed performing basic Taekwondo moves. Naturally, they especially enjoyed the part where they could punch and kick mitts and shields. It was during this program that I first met Issa. Issa was in year 5 at the time, small in stature, big in self-confidence. What I noticed was that he always wanted to go first at any cost, so that he could show everyone how great he was. Even this meant pushing in front when we lined up to do our training. I noticed that Issa kept rebooking the program and returned 25 weeks in a row. His attitude improved so much over the weeks, and in the 25th lesson we witnessed an amazing act of inspiration. While we were kicking the shield, Issa was holding the shield for his partner. I've always suggested to students that they should try and help their partners achieve the best results, but I did not expect to see this happen with Issa. However, on this momentous day, Issa not only encouraged his partner with words of greatness, but he started to encourage everyone around him. This had such an effect on the class that everyone started to encourage everyone. The feeling was electric and extremely memorable. I told Issa that one day I'd give him a proper thank you for what he had done. He looked very proud as he said, Thanks, Master Paul. Issa really enjoyed training with me and soon joined the evening United Taekwondo class at Carlton Public School. About 18 months later, Issa was grading for his blue belt, about five promotions away from black belt. As he was standing in the middle of the grading hall, I sat everyone down except for Issa. I told the story of the old Issa during the personal development program and how Issa was all about me, me, me at the time. Then I let them know that Issa is now one of my best students and how many lives he has changed through leadership and inspiration. I asked Issa to demonstrate a pattern in the middle of the hall in front of 200 people. It was amazing to see a young boy so passionate about his martial arts demonstrate one of the most explosive patterns I have ever seen. The applause seemed to go on forever and when it subsided I leant forward and quietly said, Now that's how you say thank you. He gently smiled. The deputy principal for Greenacre Public School happened to be in the audience that night and she came over to me and said, That was fantastic. You are coming to my school. I was very happy and later in the book I'll let you know what happened. Issa is still training and every time I see him we exchange a smile, always remembering that because he developed a passion for helping people, we developed a bond for life. Testing Grounds Often I often ask children the question, is it alright to get angry? There are a lot of mixed responses until I put up my hand and say, yes. They look at me strangely until I explain that yes, it is alright to get angry, but the secret lies in how you deal with the problem. That's what makes a difference. What do I mean by that? I normally give the example of someone cutting you off in traffic. The solution most people take is to get angry, shake their fists, yell obscenities and think about getting out of the car. But honestly, what does that solve? I tell and teach my students how not to react to a situation because it is based on emotions, but how to respond in a calm manner. After all, who knows what is going on in the driver's head? Maybe the driver was stressed about something, panic about an ill relative or elderly or very nervous on the road. We all make mistakes and perhaps the driver was not aware of what he had done. While your child is training in different arenas, they will experience similar feelings of anger and frustration. 
They could be in a training center, at a seminar or demonstration, at a grading or competing in a tournament. Reacting calmly is always a better way to deal with the situation and, and that ability is just one of the sub-outcomes of learning a martial art. Let's look at the different arenas and illustrate how training can help your child overcome fear and emotional reactions. 1. Training Centers I remember when I began my own training, I found that working at my local center gave me the skills to defend myself against my fellow students. It was relaxing to train in a familiar environment, but it became much harder when I was training for my black belt. To gather new skills and extend myself, I trained at different centers across Sydney, which brought me up against people who I'd never seen before. This meant I didn't have the advantage of knowing my partner's ability and gone with the options of using my favorite techniques against someone I knew, couldn't work against them. I now had to rely on my instructor's advice and my interpretations of lessons learned. It was exciting but fearful at the same time. I stayed as the contact increased and my opponent's techniques were better than mine. What was I to do? It was my instructor who gave me the advice not to get frustrated or angry, but focus on the task at hand. He also said, it doesn't matter if you win or lose, it is the mastery of oneself that is the greatest victory. 2. Grading As children progress through the program, they will be graded. As they get older, the grading process is a program that also shapes them for life. Gradings help you stay focused. In our busy day-to-day -day life, it can be hard to see regular and obvious improvements. Working out at the gym, doing laps, or regular jogging are all great, but who is there to challenge you? Who asks you to go that little harder, push a little further? Gradings do just that. As trainers, we ask the question, are you preparing yourself for grading? If not, why not? When your children become adults, they will have vast array of life skills that will pay off in so many unrealized ways. Don't just work out. Go the extra distance and be rewarded when you achieve a result. You can work hard and gain more money, a better car, a bigger house, more responsibility, less time with your family. The difference with martial art is it enables you to have some time for you and keeps you motivated to stay in shape as you achieve small regular goals. The great part of this is it gives you a better and more alert state of mind. You feel better and healthier because you are fitter. So you perform better and able to go the extra distance in all you take on. Going for grading takes you the extra distance. It moves you past the mediocre and on to excellence. And you pass a lot of people on the way. 3. Seminars When your child reaches either a certain level or age, they'll be invited to attend seminars. These are events that are conducted either at the dojo or in a larger hall if numbers require it. Your child will possibly have to learn some new skills, which may be initially frustrating for them. One minute they are feeling as though they are a capable student, the next thing they are being told to mix up their left and right. The idea is to unsettle them and get them used to having to adapt. The end result is the ability to adapt current skill levels, but your child will need an open mind. Grandmaster Vince Palumba, GMV as he is known, is one of many instructors who have given up their time to allow students to broaden their martial arts knowledge. Below is a recollection of a special day courtesy of GMV. GMV was invited to conduct a seminar for United Taekwondo and the results were sensational. Over 100 instructors and students trained for more than six hours with GMV with the assistance of two dedicated masters. United Taekwondo students gained a better understanding of the benefits of learning from a world champion. The day started with a mixture of boxing, kickboxing and Taekwondo and offered students a different perspective on how to cover ground effectively and prepare oneself for close quarters combat. Once the basics have been covered, we partnered up to experience some good pain. GMV explained the theory and then demonstrated the effectiveness of each technique on many willing instructors and students. The feeling was sensational and really gave us a great perspective on how hard GMV must have conditioned himself to prepare for the world-class competitions. The afternoon session transformed our basic taekwondo blocks and strikes into jiu-jitsu self-defense. Our low section block took out the opponent to the ground and then into a choke. Our raising block shut off the carotid artery, our outer forearm block broke the elbow, and our outer forearm inward block locked off the arm. GMV gave us a different perspective on self-defense without losing any respect for the dynamics of Taekwondo. The seminar concluded with Kakoe Dose Paris, a scream of Filipino stick and knife defense. All students enjoyed the Grandmaster demonstrating the effectiveness of simplicity and motion. The versatility of the dagger captivated the members and feedback suggests that adding a screamer techniques to Taekwondo will only enhance the art. 
If your child is ever invited to a seminar, I'd highly recommend the experience. 4. Demonstrations This is where a child will demonstrate skill either for promotion of their own gym, supporting a community faith, or for raising money for charity. As you all know, not everything goes to plan and sometimes children fall over, don't break the boards, or forget their pattern, set moves. It can be embarrassing, frustrating, and sometimes they feel like giving up. This is where your child's instructor will provide them with a set of tools to get them through the difficult times. I must say from experience that when the crowd started a comment, it was hard to continue. I remember a demonstration I did at Elizabeth MacArthur High School in Sydney. There were about 880 people watching the demonstration, and there were five students in the demonstration. One person only had an hour's experience, but really wanted to participate. We started with some basics during the performance, as expected. The new student got a bit confused. The crowd started to snicker under their breath, so I stopped the demonstration. I said, you need to show more respect for these students who are willing to get up and demonstrate their skills for your entertainment. I all sat quietly and watched the rest of the demonstration. Near the end, I asked one of the senior students to fly over three people and break a board. His first five attempts were unsuccessful, and I asked the crowd to give him some encouragement. It was amazing as the crowd started to cheer for their fellow students. The look on my student's face was a vision of overwhelming confidence. He now had 880 people right behind him. He jumped so high and so long that we had to move backwards to allow for room to complete the break. After breaking the board, the crowd cheered loudly and the students took strong and bowed respectfully to the crowd while saying thank you. I found out later that that student used to get bullied at school every day but was too shy to tell me. It was about two weeks after the demonstration that he told me of his ordeals at school and added that since the demonstration, he has not been bullied. It was an unexpected result, but most welcomed. 5. Tournaments This is where a student will compete not only against his own club members, but against a person from a different style. All styles of martial arts have their own advantages in competition, and to be honest, there is no ultimate martial art. The tournaments are monitored by officials and the competitors receive clear instructions about contact. The children and the older competitors learn to interact with others and also learn aspects of different martial arts. Why these five elements help your child? The five testing grounds above are essential training tools to give your child the inner capacity to deal with anger and the frustrations of life. The benefits are enormous and will give your child the confidence and decision making skills to deal with this issue that arise in the playground and outside the dojang. Please understand that your child will receive the odd bruise or knock to the body in class, but this is from a fellow student who has been taught respect and control. Outside the dojang, there are no rules, no one to stop the bout if things get rough. The experience from training and competing is priceless in helping your child deal with life. Self-mastery. Many students want more knowledge of how to increase their fighting skills than just training. In some ways, the martial arts style you choose for your child will determine whether they work on increasing their fighting skills, focus on aesthetics of their forms in pursuit of competition points, or study the forms to find the key to the most effective moves for real combat. In order to value forms, it's necessary to understand why the founders of our art developed forms in the first place. Forms are the vehicles through which the combative techniques and principles of a particular master or style are transmitted from generation to generation. It will take time to fully understand in sufficient depth the true meaning behind the techniques, but with patience, persistence and perspiration, it makes an unbeatable combination for success. Not every child will want to perform patterns of sets of moves, but personally, it tells me a lot about a person within. It allows a person to master oneself. Making a champion. Quote, it is better to have a class of champions than only one champion in the class. As instructors, we have the responsibility to train everyone to be promoted for grading. The problem is time. Every student would love to achieve their black belt tomorrow, but they need to realise it takes time. During their training, they'll need to mature as a martial artist. It is normal for a student not to promote too fast, because at some point, they'll become disappointed on the same level, either because they are not going fast enough or their skills aren't improving. The trick is for your child to trust in their instructor and follow their advice and eventually you and they will see the results far beyond expectations. We have been students too and through dedication, loyalty, perseverance, integrity and respect we have been successful. We want to give your child the same skill set so that your child will experience the same results. Don't place too high expectation on your child because if they can't achieve what the other students have achieved at the same time 
they may leave or lose confidence that one day it will see them rise up and become a champion in their own eyes. Quote, Every success is a step in the right direction. Anger management, stress relief. In my experience, martial arts not only improves a child's physical fitness, but also helps improve self-control and discipline and lowers feelings of aggression and stress in the child overall. Using martial arts to control anger and stress is more effective than just verbal therapy, because verbal therapy only encourages children to control their behaviour, but does not reduce negative emotions. When your child participates in martial arts, aggressive behaviour is monitored and controlled with the byproduct of reducing stress. The key is to introduce children to something that they love to do. Finding something that motivates them gives a child a sense of purpose and decreases the likelihood that they will act out any behavioural problems. Surrounding children with like-minded people who are willing to share their knowledge and offer support will offer your child the best environment for success. Life may test you, challenge you, shake you or break you, but how strong you stand is what makes you. Shin Atemi, UK Chapter 5 Yes, I can do it. Success stories. We all look at others and think we can't achieve what they've achieved because of this reason or that. Children are actually better at having the confidence to say, I can do it. It's we adults who often have more of a problem. And the truth of it is that we can all achieve a goal if we put our minds and heart to it. The secret is just doing the hard work to get there. There is no better proof that we can all achieve amazing things than the case studies I share with you here. Story of Ben When I started my own organisation in 2006, there was a young black tip named Ben. This is his story. Ben was a shy student when he first started, but after years of training, we reached the day when Ben was ready to grade for promotion to black belt. If Ben was successful, he'd become my first black belt under Sydney Taekwondo, now called United Taekwondo. There were about 40 students present on the night, and about the same amount of parents watching on the side. It was the first grading I conducted on my own, I wanted everything to be just perfect. The night started with Ben performing his pattern. The pattern is called Chung Mu and consists of 24 individual moves that are linked together in a sequential format. Initially I asked Ben to do the moves by numbers, so that we can see if he is performing correct technique. Then I asked him to do it in his own time. Ben shouted on each technique and after years of training we saw a different side of this initially shy young student. The onlookers watched in amazement as Ben fluently combined all the individual techniques to perform an exceptional pattern with determination, focus and speed. We moved on to the board breaking. As a junior student applying for black belt we asked him to break using three techniques. The first is a sidekick. This is where the rear foot lifts up and travels through the center line of the body and as the foot nears the board, the hip is rotated over and the foot is parallel to the ground on contact. Ben broke the board on his first attempt with accuracy and speed. The next technique is a back kick. This requires a student to turn backwards and perform a similar action to a side kick. Again, Ben was successful on his first attempt. The crowd applauded each time and Ben's confidence grew with each successful break. Then I called out to three people to crash down next to each other so Ben could fly over them and break his final board with a flying sidekick. Ben's face changed. I knew he felt challenged by this. I asked branch instructor Gary if Ben could fly over three people. He replied, saying he should make it, but it's not Ben's favourite technique and he might need some encouragement. The first two attempts were unsuccessful and the tension was building in the room with everybody craning forward, willing Ben to succeed. Finally, on his third attempt, he made it over and broke the board. The crowd roared as Ben landed, but I still believe he could do better. We moved on to free sparring. This is where you compete against a number of fellow students in similar rank, size and experience. There were three students to free spar, and Ben was required to keep rotating between opponents until he believed that he had demonstrated enough endurance, skill and technique. On the completion of multiple rounds, I still believed that Ben could do better. I said Goman, Korean for stop. Ben stopped and looked at me. I turned to the branch instructor and we began to free spar. At the completion of a demonstration, I turned back to Ben and said in a loud voice, Now spar like that. Ben turned and opened up on all three students. It was electrifying to see the talent that this student possessed as he sparred hard against all three opponents. At the completion of the free spar, I said, They get ready to jump over five people. Ben was pumped. The crowd were on their feet as Ben jumped over all five and on his first attempt, broke the board. After Ben's promotion to black belt, his mother came running up to me, hugged me and said, 
You have made my son feel so proud. Thank you. I smiled as I replied, saying it was my pleasure. I've always remembered those words from Ben's mum and have tried to achieve the same result at every grading for every student at all levels. Story of Alex Alex was a young boy around nine years of age when he started with United Taekwondo in 2010 and he was very good at soccer. Alex decided that one day he'd like to compete in National All-Styles NAS in a Sydney tournament held at Ride Aquatic Centre. When Alex arrived, I was already competing in the Veteran Forms, a division for students and instructors over the age of 40. I've always wanted the event manager to change the name of the event because it made me feel old. I competed early in my division and when I finished my pattern, I noticed that Alex in the background practicing very hard would like the technique, speed and focus to do well in his first tournament. I had a spare 15 minutes before the event presentation, so I decided to spend that time with Alex. Alex had only been training for a relatively short time, but as mentioned earlier, he was very good at soccer. I asked Alex if he'd like some assistance, and he was positive, saying, Yes, that would be great, Master Paul. Slowly went through his pattern and corrected the missing elements that would make a huge difference to the result. I needed one more thing to inspire my student, and as I considered the problem, it came to me. In the meantime, I went over to the veterans ring and was presented with first place. I left the ring and returned to Alex and said, I've achieved first place, now it's your turn. It was just like out of the movies. Alex went on to the competitive mat believing in himself and performed an exceptional pattern. What made me happy was not that Alex achieved second place out of 30 competitors, but Alex trusted and followed my advice. Story of Kirili. Kirili was only seven years old, very shy and very small in stature. In the MacArthur area of Sydney, we hold a grading around the mid-year point. The latest grading was due to start in the hall and every student was either being trained by an instructor or practicing by themselves in preparation for their assessment, except for a little girl in the front row. I turned to the branch instructor and asked, who is the girl in the front? He replied, her name is Kiralee and she is very nervous. I asked him where Kiralee's parents were and the instructor pointed over to my right and added, Kiralee is also very shy and she might cry and run over to her parents. I thought about this for a moment and then shouted, Come on! which in Korean means stop. Come to attention, get ready for the next instruction. I said, all students move in, including all black belts and instructors. I further instructed them to line up for a white belt grading test. I made sure Kira was positioned in the middle with strong students surrounding her to build up her confidence. I repeated all the basic hand and foot techniques over and over until all students displayed great technique and understanding. The final part of the grading was a seven move pattern called right forward directional punch. The pattern relied on the person moving to the right forward, punching with the right hand, then turning to the left nine degrees and moving the right foot backward and blocking with the left arm downward towards the left knee. You then repeat the process five more times, finishing with a punch at the end, a loud shout. We repeated the pattern approximately 20 times and as Kiralee's confidence grew, one by one I sat down in groups of black, brown, blue, yellow, green and white belts and Tikuli was standing on her own in front of 150 people. I yelled, Chumbi, ready position. Right foot directional punch. Sicha! Begin. You should have seen everyone's face when Kiralee moved with confidence, determination and great technique, shouting in every move. When she finished her pattern, I looked to my right and both parents were in tears. When I looked to my left, the instructor was standing in disbelief. I smiled and said to the instructor, is Kiralee applying for black belt? It took 15 minutes to change Kiralee from a shy and insecure girl to a strong and determined martial artist. I hushed the hall and said to everyone present, I'd like to thank everyone here tonight for giving up 15 minutes of their time to support Kiralee and give her the gift of confidence, a gift for life. The difference we made to Kiralee's confidence is our strength. I think the greatest reward an instructor can receive is to see his own student achieve way beyond their expectations. These are just a couple of the stories that have touched my heart and made my position as an instructor, teacher and mentor one of the greatest choices I have made in my life. Personal development. As I keep on saying, fitness and self-defense skills are just the start of what martial arts can do for your child. Self-confidence is a child's passport to a lifetime of mental health and social happiness. It is the foundation of a child's well-being and the key to success as an adult. At all ages, how you feel about yourself affects how you act. Think about a time when you are feeling really good about yourself. I'm sure you possibly found it much easier to get along with others. 
As instructors, we have interacted with hundreds, if not thousands of children over the years, and this daily experience has given us some insight into human nature. Throughout life, your child will be exposed to positive influence builders and negative influence breakers. Parents can expose their children to more builders and help them work through the breakers. Please allow me to offer some suggestions for you to use at home to increase your child's self-confidence. 1. Remember when your child was a baby and the time you spent caring, feeding and building that bond. You remember that a young toddler needed more attention and that as they grew, sometimes you couldn't always respond promptly or consistently. Don't worry. It is the predominant pattern that is important. Try and make time to keep that positive relationship and still give them the space to develop independence. If they join a martial arts centre, turn off your mobile phone and just enjoy watching your child during training. 2. Improve your own self-confidence. A child's self-esteem is acquired, not inherited. Certain parenting traits and certain character traits, such as anger and fearfulness, are learnt in each generation. Raising your child gives you the chance to become a parent you wish you had. If you suffer from low self-confidence, especially if you're feeling it is a result of how you were parented, take steps to heal yourself and break the family pattern. Increasing your self-confidence or decreasing anger and frustration will have a flow-on effect for your child. 3. Become a positive reflection of your child's self-image. Not only is self-perception important, but how they think others perceive them is equally important. If you give a positive reflection, they learn to think well of themselves. When you place them in a positive learning environment, you'll also see a difference. 4. Joining martial arts with the child and experience the pain and pleasure has double benefits. You'll get fit and healthy, but there are also wonderful opportunities to enhance your child's self-perception. For example, asking a child if they could teach you patterns while turning it into a game gives them a feel of importance and accomplishment. If possible, ask your child if there's a martial arts game that they'd like to play. Maybe something they have learned at training. This will hold the child's attention longer than the game you suggested. 5. As a child develops in martial arts, you may see the carry over principle. This is where an activity boosts a child's self-image, and this carries over to other endeavours. For example, one of my sons is a natural martial artist, but he wasn't interested in academics. Operating the carryover principle, we encourage his enjoyment of martial arts while supporting him as he worked on his academics. The schoolwork improved as his overall self-confidence increased. Recognise your child's special talents, help them to build on them, then watch the whole person blossom. 6. Set your child up to succeed. As parents, we see ability in our children well before they understand that they have a talent in a specific area. Striking a balance between pushing and protecting is difficult but necessary. If you don't encourage your child to try, his skills don't improve, and you've lost a valuable confidence builder. If you don't protect your children from unrealistic expectations, her sense of competence is threatened. Just remember not to have expectations because you are talented in that field and you like your child to follow in your footsteps. 7. Around age 6, when your child begins primary school, other adults become influential in their life. These are people who are around your child enough to influence their behaviour and model values. Once upon a time, people of significance in a child's life came primarily from within the extended family. But in today's mobile society, a child is likely to have a wider variety of peers and people of significance. As you have read previously, martial arts instructors pride themselves on teaching and demonstrating good values. By focusing on your child becoming respectful, determined, resilient and proud of their accomplishments, martial arts students are high achievers. 8. Give your child responsibilities. In martial arts, as a student progresses, they develop self-confidence and initialize values by channeling their energy into desirable behaviours and teaching skills. I have appointed senior students on numerous occasions to instruct groups of members in basic technique and etiquette. The results are impressive both in the respect they gain from the students during the instruction and the quality of outcomes achieved by the instructors and students. You'll be amazed at the change in your child's confidence even after one lesson. It changed my life and it can change your child's life too.
Give someone one of your smiles. It might be the only sunshine they see all day. It can change the world, maybe not the whole world, but their world. Chapter 6. Supportive Network The strength of a community relies on the people within it. Showing your child the benefits of being part of a community is a wonderful gift to your child and to the community they live within. Story of a student's father. I remember when Larissa, Karina and Brayden joined one of my local centres. They were all quiet but enjoyed the interaction with other children in the class. They worked hard and had already attained one grading during the year and had now qualified for their second promotion around May 2012. When grading day arrived, their mum rang me and explained that her husband was not well after treatment for cancer and that the children would not be able to attend grading as she was needed at home and could not get them there. We spoke for a little while and I told her not to worry. What we'll do is have a special in-house grading when her husband was feeling better. She was happy with that and said that would be fantastic. A few weeks later, as planned, the children turned up to the hall to do their grading, but unfortunately their father was still not feeling up to leaving the house. I asked their mum if she had the internet at home, to which she applied, yes we do. I said, right, I said, ask your husband to log in onto his emails and get ready to see his children go for grading. I dug out my iPad and ran the grading for children in small sections, videoing the grading as they went through their patterns. I then emailed the videos to Dad throughout the night, so even though he could not attend in person, he could still feel a part of his children's achievements. The mother rang me when she got home and passed on her husband's thanks for what I had done. As an instructor, I felt I needed to do more, so I did not charge the children for grading and stop their monthly payments for training. I suggested to the mother she might like to use the money to take the family out somewhere special when her husband was feeling better. Once a month they go to a place which brought back good memories. The father passed away October 2012, but I'll always remember the impact for everyone involved when I promoted the children in class. Give from the heart. Quote, Use your smile to change the world. Don't let the world change your smile. In martial arts, students are taught about the benefits of giving and I normally explain it with the following analogy. I have never met a giver who is not a happy person because giving is like a seed. Whatever you give will grow and come back to you when you plant it in good soil. Many people wonder why they don't have a harvest of good relationships or why no one ever gives them anything. Frankly, it's because they don't give anything back and you should not give expecting to receive. Giving is important because it gives you a sense of achievement, especially if you are giving back to the community. We all benefit from the decent actions of others, and I think it is important for society that we learn to be givers. Giving also shows that you have the correct mindset, because the seed that you invest in someone starts a chain reaction. They're generous and decent to others, and so the cycle continues. Just think of what you, as a giver, could propagate. I don't believe there's ever been a monument erected to a taker. They're all erected to givers. It's important to remember though that if you ever want to be a successful leader, you need to give without any strings attached. Don't give and then hold it against people. That becomes a very controlling mindset. When you give, give from the heart. There are so many ways martial arts clubs interact with their local communities. Here are just a few. Community support with demonstrations. I remember when the local Lions Club ran a faded local park. They wanted to raise money and awareness of how Lions Club members provide help for the youth, the elderly, the disabled and disadvantaged of the community. We offered our assistance on the day by bringing along martial arts members from our local clubs to give a demonstration and entertain the crowds. On the day itself I could see dark clouds heading our way, so I decided that we should speed up the demonstration. The crowd was impressed with the dynamics, the speed and the organisation skills we demonstrated. Little did they know the purpose behind our execution. I am sure they felt impressed at our speed in packing up our shields, hand mitts, broken boards and tiles and disappearing rather smartly. As expected, it was only moments after finishing that the rain came down hard and fast. The Lion Club rang us later and thanked us for a great day and the great support. Doing time to stop youth crime. Time for Kids Fundraiser is a PCYC initiative where community leaders do time to help prevent youth crime. They are put into a jail cell in the main street for up to an hour, or 30 minutes if they're good. The aim is to raise $500 or more. All the instructors from Nato Kondo raised money prior to the event, and together we donated over $1,500 towards the PCYC initiative, and yes, I was allowed to be released from jail even though some people paid to keep me in. Recognition Australasian Martial Arts Hall of Fame and the World Karate Union Hall of Fame 
The Australasian Martial Arts Hall of Fame, Amerhof, was founded in 1996 by the late Professor Brian Gallen, 1952-2001, in conjunction with Master Frank Tazitano, President of the World Karate Union Hall of Fame, WKUHOF. Professor Gallen resigned as President of Amerhof in October 1998 and was placed by Kiyoshi Raymond Lawrence. Each year, the Australasian Martial Arts Hall of Fame calls for nominations from the public, readers, instructors, parents, physicians in sports medicine, whether or not they are martial artists and non-martial artists who contribute unselfishly to the growth of martial arts. Nomination ballots are sent out all over the world to enable people to nominate those they feel deserve the honour or recognition. In 2008, I was inducted along with 12 other martial arts practitioners. It was a proud and memorable moment to be recognised by my peers because of my contribution to local communities around Australasia. In 1996, the event has recognised just 200 instructors who have been inducted into Amerhof and the World Karate Union Hall of Fame. It is a testament to the assessment process and a great tribute to every instructor inducted. National All Styles, NAS. Since 1984, martial arts from all over Australia have gathered to compete in Australia's premier event. Men, women and children of all different martial arts backgrounds compete in this most unbiased and non-restrictive all-styles event. Taekwondo, karate, kung fu, freestyle, kickboxing, kempo and a host of other martial arts have been able to compete in this impartial, equitable, world-renowned collective of martial arts styles and forms. The formula proved so successful in Australia that adherents across the world called for a world tournament following the same concept, rules and regulations. Thus, the World All Styles Organisation, WASO, was born in 1996, enabling martial arts from around the world to compete under rules that are suitable for all disciplines. Everyone joins in and has a lot of fun, without too much in the way of defensive love of your own style. This open-minded approach to martial arts and acceptance of all styles has made the NAS and WASO tournaments the most enjoyable tournaments on the martial arts circuit. I'm sure they'll continue to grow and improve as we head deeper into the 21st century. NAS has forms, point sparring, continuous sparring, team sparring, demonstrations and weaponry in an exciting range of categories for all ages and experience levels. Reports from all NAS tournaments are featured in Australasian Premier Martial Arts Magazine, Blitz. Photos, reports and ratings for competitors from each event. The successful formula that NAS has built on is a truly unbiased, non-political organisation which all of us are proud to be involved with. Over 10,000 competitors get together annually and hundreds of officials and instructors join with them and all attendees get to take advantage of all benefits of meeting others and training with different styles. National All Styles tournaments offer a great way to test months and years of hard training. Many competitors make a family event of it and I can guarantee you, should your child progress, he or she wants to go to NAS, the entire family will love the event. Said, NAS is just one of the tournaments your child might like to compete in against other children in a safe, competitive environment. Tournament conditions change from contact to non-contact and each will depend entirely on the chosen style or whether competitions are part of their curriculum. Story of Nicholas Nicholas Garavano entered the 15 to 17 years open male continuous sparring for the first time. This is not an easy event, especially when two of the competitors are long-standing veterans of this event and both have held national titles. Just so you may understand how the event is run and how the point system works, here is a simple explanation. The idea of continuous sparring is to evade, defend and throw effective techniques, touch contact to the body only, so that three judges can decide a winner. If you hit an opponent, you have the possibility of receiving a warning, one point penalty, a yellow card, two points, a red card, or being disqualified if you reach four penalty points or show malice. Round one, Nick got a great start for being the underweight of the division. This put him at the bottom of the list and no round one competitor. This meant that he would have to wait until the next round. Round two, Nick's opponent was highly skilled and had a lot more tournament experience. I advised Nick that it would be a fierce event and contact was inevitable. He said with a smile, thanks for that. It was not long until the first penalty point was awarded against Nick's opponent for a punch in the face. He looked at me for support and I gave him the thumbs up. Number two was a body shot. That made it 2-0. The third penalty point was against Nick as a deflection saw him touch his opponent's face. 2-1. Finally, his opponent gave Nick a solid shot and he lost the match to a red card. 4-1 and was disqualified. At this stage, Nick was showing a bit of wear and tear, but his spirits were still high. Round three. 
Nick was up against John Thomas, multiple national champion winner. I've never been more proud of Nick when he showed me one of the greatest continuous sparring matches I've seen in six years. John just kept pounding Nick with straight punches and low thigh kicks, but Nick not only defended well, but gave back just the same, if not better. The judges decided to award the match to John. After the match, I spoke to John, thanked him for a great match, and when I informed him that this was Nick's second round ever, he smiled and said to me, now there's a champion in the making. Nick was only given one minute to fight off a third and fourth place. While we were waiting to start, Nick looked at me and said, I want this so bad, I want to win a medal. It was an emotional moment to look into Nick's eyes and see so much passion. I knew that he needed me and I was going nowhere. We had seen his competitors spar before and knew that Nick's 90 seconds was going to be a battle as Nick still held onto the scars in the previous bouts. Round 4. Nick started strong as expected but it was only 30 seconds in the match when Nick took another blow to the face. The score was 1-0 and Nick knew he couldn't stop now. At the one minute mark I yelled out, Go Nick, go! This was a signal to let him know that there's only 30 seconds left in the match. The noise of the crowd cheering was intense. I started yelling out support so that Nick knew he was not alone. When it was all over, the judges gave their scores. 10-9, 9-10 and 10-10. This meant that both competitors received 29 points each and it all came down to penalty points. Nick looked over his shoulder at me and I gave him the thumbs up. I turned back, the referee threw his hand in the air and awarded Nick third place. Nick told me later, I want to be a national champion. Isn't it amazing how one event can change your goals in life? President Productions, about the awards. The Small Business Champion Awards is a prestigious and comprehensive program that supports and recognises small businesses across Australia. Offering a unique opportunity to highlight Australia's most outstanding small businesses, the award seeks to recognise the hard work that business owners contribute to the local community in generating employment for millions of Australians, as well as their contribution to the Australian economy. Recently, Inatakono was awarded Best Health and Fitness Business in the Canwell and Dilla area for 2017. The award recognises contribution, values and success in businesses in our local community. Background. Developed by President Productions, a small business in its own rights with 28 years experience managing and coordinating successful awards program, the Australian Small Business Champion Awards originated from a very successful New South Wales Small Business Champion of Champions Awards, which has been running since 1999. In 2010, United Hockenau was recognised nationally as the best education service in Australia. Can this help you decide the right style for your child? When you read the previous material, I hope it gave you a taste of the work and effort that most styles will put into their community. For many of us, it's a labour of love, and in some ways demonstrates the sort of person the typical martial arts leader is. He or she is often active in the community, tries to be a giver and makes it possible for large tournaments to happen because of their time, energy and spirit. You can be sure that entrusting your child to local martial arts organisations will pay off for your child. All centres will have the correct values to ensure that your child is receiving the best instruction from a recognised organisation. Give someone one of your smiles. It might be the only sunshine they see all day. It can change the world. Maybe not the whole world, but their world. Chapter 6. Supportive Network The strength of a community relies on the people within it. Showing your child the benefits of being part of a community is a wonderful gift to your child and to the community they live within. Story of a student's father I remember when Larissa, Karina and Brayden joined one of my local centres. They were all quiet but enjoyed the interaction with other children in the class. They worked hard and had already attained one grading during the year and had now qualified for their second promotion around May 2012. When grading day arrived, their mum rang me and explained that her husband was not well after treatment for cancer and that the children would not be able to attend grading as she was needed at home and could not get them there. We spoke for a little while and I told her not to worry. What we'll do is have a special in-house grading when her husband was feeling better. She was happy with that and said that would be fantastic. A few weeks later, as planned, the children turned up to the hall to do their grading, but unfortunately their father was still not feeling up to leaving the house. I asked their mum if she had the internet at home, to which she applied, yes we do. I said, right, I said, ask your husband to log in onto his emails and get ready to see his children go for grading. I dug out my iPad and ran the grading for children in small sections, videoing the grading as they went through their patterns. I then emailed the videos to Dad throughout the night 
So even though he could not attend in person, he could still feel a part of his children's achievements. The mother rang me when she got home and passed on her husband's thanks for what I had done. As an instructor, I felt I needed to do more, so I did not charge the children for grading and stop their monthly payments for training. I suggested to the mother she might like to use the money to take the family out somewhere special when her husband was feeling better. Once a month they go to a place which brought back good memories. The father passed away October 2012, but I'll always remember the impact for everyone involved when I promoted the children in class. Give from the heart, quote, Use your smile to change the world, don't let the world change your smile. In martial arts, students are taught about the benefits of giving, and I normally explain it with the following analogy. I have never met a giver who is not a happy person because giving is like a seed. Whatever you give will grow and come back to you when you plant it in good soil. Many people wonder why they don't have a harvest of good relationships or why no one ever gives them anything. Frankly, it's because they don't give anything back and you should not give expecting to receive. Giving is important because it gives you a sense of achievement, especially if you are giving back to the community. We all benefit from the decent actions of others, and I think it is important for society that we learn to be givers. Giving also shows that you have the correct mindset because the seed that you invest in someone starts a chain reaction. They're generous and decent to others, and so the cycle continues. Just think of what you, as a giver, could propagate. I don't believe there's ever been a monument erected to a taker. They're all erected to givers. It's important to remember though that if you ever want to be a successful leader, you need to give without any strings attached. Don't give and then hold it against people. That becomes a very controlling mindset. When you give, give from the heart. There are so many ways martial arts clubs interact with their local communities. Here are just a few. Community support with demonstrations. I remember when the local Lions Club ran a faded local park. They wanted to raise money and awareness of how Lions Club members provide help for the youth, the elderly, the disabled and disadvantaged of the community. We offered our assistance on the day by bringing along martial arts members from our local clubs to give a demonstration and entertain the crowds. On the day itself I could see dark clouds heading our way, so I decided that we should speed up the demonstration. The crowd was impressed with the dynamics, the speed and the organisation skills we demonstrated. Little did they know the purpose behind our execution. I am sure they felt impressed at our speed in packing up our shields, hand mitts, broken boards and tiles and disappearing rather smartly. As expected, it was only moments after finishing that the rain came down hard and fast. The Lion Club rang us later and thanked us for a great day and the great support. Doing time to stop youth crime. Time for Kids Fundraiser is a PCYC initiative where community leaders do time to help prevent youth crime. They are put into a jail cell in the main street for up to an hour, or 30 minutes if they're good. The aim is to raise $500 or more. All the instructors from Naito Kondo raised money prior to the event. Together we donated over $1,500 towards the PCYC initiative. And yes, I was allowed to be released from jail even though some people paid to keep me in. Recognition Australasian Martial Arts Hall of Fame and the World Karate Union Hall of Fame the Australasian Martial Arts Hall of Fame, Amerhof, was founded in 1996 by the late Professor Brian Gallen, 1952-2001, in conjunction with Master Frank Tazitano, President of the World Karate Union Hall of Fame, WKUHOF. Professor Gallen resigned as President of Amerhof in October 1998 and was placed by Kiyoshi Raymond Lawrence. Each year, the Australasian Martial Arts Hall of Fame calls for nominations from the public, readers, instructors, parents, physicians in sports medicine, whether or not they are martial artists, and non-martial artists who contribute unselfishly to the growth of martial arts. Nomination ballots are sent out all over the world to enable people to nominate those they feel deserve the honour or recognition. In 2008, I was inducted along with 12 other martial arts practitioners. It was a proud and memorable moment to be recognised by my peers because of my contribution to local communities around Australasia. In 1996, the event has recognised just 200 instructors who have been inducted into Amerhof and the World Karate Union Hall of Fame. It is a testament to the assessment process and a great tribute to every instructor inducted. National All Styles, NAS. Since 1984, martial arts from all over Australia have gathered to compete in Australia's premier event. Men, women and children of all different martial arts backgrounds compete in this most unbiased and non-restrictive all-styles event. Taekwondo, karate, kung fu, freestyle, kickboxing, kempo 
and a host of other martial arts have been able to compete in this impartial, equitable, world-renowned collective of martial arts styles and forms. The formula proved so successful in Australia that adherents across the world called for a world tournament following the same concept, rules and regulations. Thus, the World All Styles Organisation, WASO, was born in 1996, enabling martial arts from around the world to compete under rules that are suitable for all disciplines. Everyone joins in and has a lot of fun, without too much in the way of defensive love of your own style. This open-minded approach to martial arts and acceptance of all styles has made the NAS and WASO tournaments the most enjoyable tournaments on the martial arts circuit. I'm sure they'll continue to grow and improve as we head deeper into the 21st century. NAS has forms, point sparring, continuous sparring, team sparring, demonstrations and weaponry in an exciting range of categories for all ages and experience levels. Reports from all NAS tournaments are featured in Australasian Premier Martial Arts Magazine, Blitz. Photos, reports and ratings for competitors from each event. The successful formula that NAS has built on is a truly unbiased, non-political organisation which all of us are proud to be involved with. Over 10,000 competitors get together annually and hundreds of officials and instructors join with them and all attendees get to take advantage of all benefits of meeting others and training with different styles. National All Styles tournaments offer a great way to test months and years of hard training. Many competitors make a family event of it and I can guarantee you, should your child progress, he or she wants to go to NAS, the entire family will love the event. Said, NAS is just one of the tournaments your child might like to compete in against other children in a safe, competitive environment. Tournament conditions change from contact to non-contact and each will depend entirely on the chosen style or whether competition is a part of their curriculum. Story of Nicholas Nicholas Garavano entered the 15 to 17 years open male continuous sparring for the first time. This is not an easy event, especially when two of the competitors are long-standing veterans of this event and both have held national titles. Just so you may understand how the event is run and how the point system works, here is a simple explanation. The idea of continuous sparring is to evade, defend and throw effective techniques, touch contact to the body only, so that three judges can decide a winner. If you hit an opponent, you have the possibility of receiving a warning, one point penalty, a yellow card, two points, a red card, or being disqualified if you reach four penalty points or show malice. Round one, Nick got a great start for being the underweight of the division. This put him at the bottom of the list and no round one competitor. This meant that he would have to wait until the next round. Round two, Nick's opponent was highly skilled and had a lot more tournament experience. I advised Nick that it would be a fierce event and contact was inevitable. He said with a smile, thanks for that. It was not long until the first penalty point was awarded against Nick's opponent for a punch in the face. He looked at me for support and I gave him the thumbs up. Number two was a body shot. That made it 2-0. The third penalty point was against Nick as a deflection saw him touch his opponent's face. 2-1. Finally, his opponent gave Nick a solid shot and he lost the match to a red card. 4-1 and was disqualified. At this stage, Nick was showing a bit of wear and tear, but his spirits were still high. Round three. Nick was up against John Thomas, multiple national champion winner. I've never been more proud of Nick when he showed me one of the greatest continuous sparring matches I've seen in six years. John just kept pounding Nick with straight punches and low thigh kicks, but Nick not only defended well, but gave back just the same, if not better. The judges decided to award the match to John. After the match, I spoke to John, thanked him for a great match, and when I informed him that this was Nick's second round ever, he smiled and said to me, now there's a champion in the making. Nick was only given one minute to fight off a third and fourth place. While we were waiting to start, Nick looked at me and said, I want this so bad. I want to win a medal. It was an emotional moment to look into Nick's eyes and see so much passion. I knew that he needed me and I was going nowhere. We had seen his competitors spar before and knew that Nick's 90 seconds was going to be a battle as Nick still held onto the scars in the previous bouts. Round 4 Nick started strong as expected, but it was only 30 seconds in the match when Nick took another blow to the face. The score was 1-0 and Nick knew he couldn't stop now. At the one minute mark I yelled out, Go Nick, go! This was a signal to let him know that there was only 30 seconds left in the match. The noise of the crowd cheering was intense. I started yelling out support so that Nick knew he was not alone. When it was all over, the judges gave their scores. 
10-9, 9-10 and 10-10. This meant that both competitors received 29 points each and it all came down to penalty points. Nick looked over his shoulder at me and I gave him the thumbs up. Turned back, the referee threw his hand in the air and awarded Nick third place. Nick told me later, I want to be a national champion. Isn't it amazing how one event can change your goals in life? Precedent Productions, about the awards. The Small Business Champion Awards is a prestigious and comprehensive program that supports and recognises small businesses across Australia. Offering a unique opportunity to highlight Australia's most outstanding small businesses, the award seeks to recognise the hard work that business owners contribute to the local community in generating employment for millions of Australians, as well as their contribution to the Australian economy. Recently, Natakono was awarded Best Health and Fitness Business in the Canwell and Dilly area for 2017. The award recognises contribution, values and success in businesses in our local community. Background. Developed by President Productions, a small business in its own rights with 28 years experience managing and coordinating successful awards program, the Australian Small Business Champion Awards originated from a very successful New South Wales Small Business Champion of Champions Awards, which has been running since 1999. In 2010, United Hockenau was recognised nationally as the best education service in Australia. Can this help you decide the right style for your child? When you read the previous material, I hope it gave you a taste of the work and effort that most styles will put into their community. For many of us, it's a labour of love, and in some ways demonstrates the sort of person the typical martial arts leader is. He or she is often active in the community, tries to be a giver and makes it possible for large tournaments to happen because of their time, energy and spirit. You can be sure that entrusting your child to local martial arts organisations will pay off for your child. All centres will have the correct values to ensure that your child is receiving the best instruction from a recognised organisation. Conflict is inevitable, but combat is optional. Max Lucado. Chapter 7 the ABCs of conflict avoidance. Actually, conflict achieves very little. True victory is when no one gets hurt, including the bully or surrounding people. Martial arts isn't about fighting. It's about building self-defense and the ability to avoid conflict. Story of my son, Alex. In 2007, Alex was only 11 years old when his mum lost a battle with cancer. It was a very hard time for him and his brother, but through love and support from family and friends, I've seen Alex grow into a strong individual. Alex has always been involved in martial arts and due to his unending dedication to perfection, he achieved first hand black belt at the age of 13. Since then, Alex has been duly assessed and promoted to second degree instructor and has always been a great support to Unite Taekwondo. I remember one day Alex was coming home from doing studies in town and while he was waiting for a bus to arrive, he became aware that four individuals had noticed that he was on his own. He said to me later, Dad, I was not afraid of them, but I decided to catch a taxi home, because if I got into trouble, it might affect my career. I was very impressed that after all these years of training, he understood that if you have to throw a punch, you've already lost. Alex worked for me as an instructor after he completed school and never complained about the workload as he was helping his father. When Alex decided to join the Australian Defence Force, ADF, I gave him all my support. Together we achieved his goal for being a proud member of the ADF. When I look back over the years, I can honestly say that Alex was a great role model for my organisation. I'm very proud to call him my son. Many children, and especially boys, feel that they want to learn to fight when they start with a martial art. Maybe this is your child's intention too. Don't worry. What we all try to teach our youngsters is that fighting is not a worthy goal. Yes, your child will be able to defend him or herself, but they will not look for fights. The following points are lessons that we try to teach our children. They are skills that they will gradually acquire as a result of their training. A. Avoid potentially dangerous situations. The single most important step in conflict avoidance is knowing where not to be. The ability to recognise potentially dangerous situations is more than just common sense. It is a learnt skill that needs practice. There are three types of people. The first type of person is absolutely convinced that there is someone hiding around the corner. This person is paranoid. The second type of person is absolutely convinced that there is no one around the corner. This person is naive. The third type of person thinks that there might be someone waiting around the corner, so they take the appropriate precautions. This person is a careful person. We want you to become a careful person. 
Do not underestimate the value of being a careful person. If we can get your child into a habit of being aware of his or her surroundings and always consciously being as careful as possible, he or she will be much less likely to be confronted violently. Awareness does not stop you from doing things. It just alerts you to the possible risks. And in my opinion, this is a wonderful skill for any teenage child. Outside the dojo, there are no rules. No one to stop the bout if things get rough. Understand that you'll see the odd bruise or knocks of the body in class, but this is from a fellow student who's been raised up with respect and control. When you leave the dojo, you need to be aware of your surroundings. You need to be asking yourself questions. Who is behind or in front of me? Where are my escape routes? What am I carrying that could be used as an effective weapon? Here are some potentially dangerous situations and ways to avoid them. Walking down the footpath late at night and a group of people are coming the other way. Solution. Cross the road safely and monitor their response. If they cross the road soon after you, turn around and look for a safe place to go until the potential danger has gone. 2. Walking down the footpath. Solution. When you walk down a footpath, walk as close to the road as possible. If a person attacks you, then you'll have more escape routes available instead of being pinned to the wall or shop. 3. Going out to an unfamiliar location. Solutions. Do your research before you leave home. Print out a map and the route you would take. Tell a family member of your intentions and if you change your plans, contact someone to let them know of your new plans. When you've arrived at your destination, always be aware of your surroundings and anything that may grab your attention or look out of place. 4. Someone offers you a free drink. Solution. If you don't know the person, say no thank you. Even if you do know the person, don't share a drink from the same glass or bottle as certain diseases can spread through saliva. Never accept the drink that has already been opened. Not even from a friend, as something harmful could have been put in your drink and your friend may have thought it was funny at the time. B equals be calm, breathe. Most people tend to become emotional and react to an unplanned, unfocused way when confronted with an intimidating situation. They might even act angry, afraid or intimidated. Remember, logic and emotions are like oil and water. They don't mix. When you react emotionally to a situation, you're almost always going to make a poor decision that will either further provoke the situation or have a bad outcome. In order to think clearly and logically in an intimidating situation, it is important to be calm. Notice I said become calm. Believe it or not, the easiest way to maintain a calm disposition is to talk slowly and breathe deeply rather than fast, shallow breaths that usually accompany an emotional outburst. Quote, He who loses control of his emotions gives his opponent a powerful ally. Helping to maintain a calm attitude allows you to respond rather than react. When we can calmly respond to an intimidating situation, you have the best chance of resolving it peacefully because you're appealing to the other person's logic rather than emotion and you are not inflaming the situation. Visualize being in a threatening situation, then try to take slow deep breaths and remain as calm as possible. Remember, just knowing how to take deep breaths in a threatening situation is not enough. It has to become second nature. The only way to make it second nature is to practice. When confronted with an unavoidable situation, remain calm is the key to responding to the situation well instead of reacting to it. A simple deep breath is a powerful balm for calming the nervous system. The most dangerous emotions in a confrontation are fear and anger. Remember to put your shoulders back and tip your head up slightly to allow for a deeper breath. C equals communicate with confidence. Studies have shown us that most people who are the victims of violent crimes send out some sort of signal so that they are vulnerable. Their body language conveys the idea that they are weak and easily intimidated. Other studies involving people who are frequently involved with verbal or physical altercations show that these people send out signals of arrogance and disrespect. The solution is simple. If you can learn to present yourself in a confident and respectful manner, you're less likely to attract trouble. Let's identify the signals of an insecure person sends out. How do they carry themselves? Are their shoulders hunched forward? Do they look downward, afraid to make eye contact? Do they speak softly and walk as though they are not sure where they are going? The next step is to identify the signals that confident people send out. Focus on what these signals are and how to make them your own. Remember, even if a person doesn't feel confident, 
They can appear confident by acting it. Pretend you are an actor. Focus on the performance. Five basic traits of a confident person. Looks people in the eyes, especially when first meeting someone. Keeps their shoulders back and chin up. Walks with purpose, like they know where they are going. Speaks clearly and confidently, but not arrogantly. Appears alert and aware of their surroundings. What the mind can perceive, the heart can believe, the body can achieve. Unknown. Chapter 8. Holistic Benefits Health and fitness are the most obvious benefits, but the holistic benefits of martial arts include more self-confidence, a stronger character, become a member of a stronger community, and going through positive rites of passage rather than negative ones. Story of Brian Brian is only 73 years old, and some nights he leaves us for dead. We love him being a part of our organisation as he brings inspiration to every class with his experience and dedication and he wears the best smelling cologne in his perfectly pressed uniform. Every class, Brian arrives early and will never start class until he bows to me privately and gives me that Brian smile. It always indicates to me how happy he feels every time he turns up to training. The reason Brian joined us was to give him the strength to make it through another day. His wife, to whom he's been married for over 50 years, is getting progressively worse daily through a very debilitating, non-specific syndrome called dementia. When dementia first presents, it is the higher mental functions of the patient which start to weaken initially. Eventually in the latter stages, the person may not know what day of the week, month or year it is, and also may not be able to identify the people around them. I know how he feels as I watch my mum deteriorate with the same syndrome for over 10 years. Brian is a special person to everyone in our class, and every now and then he brings his wife Yvonne to the class to watch him and his granddaughter train. I never met a person with so much love and passion for his wife, and we all wish we had the answer to solve his wife's problem. How do we help? Well, that is easy. We train him just like everyone else, but we always remember to give him the respect he has earned as a senior member of our community. Brian has been a part of United Taekwondo since 2010, and as the years go by and another birthday appears, Brian enjoys my gift. I asked him to demonstrate his pattern in front of all the instructors, students, families, and friends. He is just awesome, and he knows that he can always turn to any member for support if required. One last thing, Brian has achieved brown belt black tip first cup, which means his next promotion is black belt. What an inspiration. Life lessons. Children soak up information like sponges, and one of the greatest things about Taekwondo, and indeed any martial art, is the life lessons it dishes out along the way. These holistic benefits on the top of the draw card benefits of fitness, healthy living, and the ability to defend oneself. The other draw card is a sense of ritual that provides a rite of passage throughout the growing years. In times past, rites of passage provide ground rules for kids as they grew into adulthood, and without them, there's a risk that the young person may go off the rails. Correct Mindset To build the correct mindset in your child, we start by explaining to them that participating in martial arts is not about giving up, but more about having fun and trying to do what we ask them to do. When we ask the child to do 20 push-ups, their first responses might be, I can't do that, or that's too hard, or I've never done that many before. We find that at first, if we offer them a reward for trying, they will give their all and more to complete the challenge. Nothing has really changed in their body's ability, but their mindset has changed. The prospect of a reward gives purpose to what they are trying to achieve and the determination to complete the challenge. As instructors, we understand that when we ask the student to complete a task, we need to give them a purpose. With purpose comes harder work, followed by a positive result and the wonderful feeling of becoming stronger within themselves. Sound mind, sound body. Here's how we give purpose. Rites of passage. In your mind, picture this. It's grady night and the student, dressed in full ceremonial attire, has arrived at the local dojang for the ritual. As the sacred space is entered, a bow is shown as a sign of respect and the student leaves the ordinary world behind them. The separation. Within this sacred space, which has been carefully prepared, the student feels alert, their senses heightened, their heart filled with meaning and their mind with possibilities, fully aware that this is a space where it all happens yet unsure exactly what lies ahead. The transition. Surrounded by the elders, community, peers and instructors, they turn and face the symbolic flag and then the trial by ordeal begins. 
This quest speaks to every facet of their being, their body, emotion and spirit. Time ceases to exist, the journey challenging, and as they move through the trials and tribulations, the student feels safe, held and supported. The Return Once the ritual is complete, the student steps out of the sacred space, returning to the ordinary world. At the next training session, the student again enters the circle at their local dojang, bows, faces the flags, but this time it's for a very different ritual. It is the celebration, and again the elders and the community are present to greet and support the student as they receive their belt. They accept it with a feeling of humility and gratitude for the gifts received, which one day they know they will share with others. This is the language and the essence of a true rite of passage, which enables students to find personal identity, feelings of competence, validation and acceptance, independence and direction. Ritual and ceremony encompasses responsibility for the self, the community, instructors and the martial arts centre the student belongs to. In our busy times and busy lifestyles, what was once considered a primal, cultural and historical act is now rare. Rites of passage are rarely practiced to this degree anymore. It is missing from our lives, faded from our existence, yet the life transitions we face are still the same, if not greater than they were in the era's past. People are busier than ever. Materialism sits high on the agenda. Stresses are always there. Bullying and harassment far more common. Little or no regard for community and many individuals walking their paths without direction, authenticity or a feeling of being held and supported. This has created a void which is currently being filled with the confusion of many individuals undergoing self-initiations with high risk of behaviours including drinking, drug use, early sexual intercourse, dangerous driving. Rites of passage are in our blood, so therefore it is a natural instinct for people to act them out. Some of the problems with self-initiations are lack of information, communication, lack of preparation, lack of vision, absence of the spiritual dimension, absence of elders and community. It can end up a long and lonely process instead of supportive and contained. There's also a real danger when rites of passage are replaced with the use of substance, knives, guns and fists. Within the Inaitakono community, rites of passage are ever present in all our activities, such as our training sessions, grading events, formal backyard dinners, Hall of Fame initiative. These are just to name a few. They are always challenging but growth producing, held and contained, supported and connected, as the student makes that journey through martial arts and the process, step by step, the rites of passage, one by one, the student will transform from boy to a true man, or girl to empower woman, embracing the change and responsibilities wholeheartedly, and not only in the martial arts arena, but within their entire way of life. And that is a gift. Britta Ithlers Transpersonal Art Therapist, September 2013 The Spirit Within the Belt Symbols have a significant impact on our daily lives. In martial arts, the belt system symbolizes the level of achievement by the student and the degree of proficiency that the student possesses in the sport. Each belt marks a milestone in the journey taken by the student and provides a visible, tangible reminder of the effort and concentration required to achieve those milestones. In the Dojang, advanced students and beginners wear the same uniforms. Only the belt distinguishes advanced students from novice to the sport. As a result, martial arts belts are powerful symbols of accomplishment and dedication to the principles and the tenets of martial arts. A sense of pride in achievement. The belt system offers motivation for students to continue their studies and progress to higher levels in martial arts. Of equal importance, however, are the philosophical aspects of the martial arts and the character traits developed through those tenets of martial arts. As students continue to grow and expand their knowledge of the physical forms and the mental challenges presented by ongoing training, the belt advancement system provides the reinforcement necessary to inspire self-confidence, self-esteem and pride in personal achievement. Motivation for personal growth. The discipline and focus acquired during training allows students to remain motivated in other areas of life as well. By taking the steps necessary to progress upward through the belt system, students always acquire the concentration skills to succeed academically and in latter working life. As symbols of accomplishment, the belts achieved in martial arts can instill the inner strength and self-esteem necessary to carry students through difficult tasks and challenges both inside and outside the dojang. 
The belt ranking system used to chart a martial arts student's progress varies from school to school. We encourage students to think about the belt ranks in the same way they think about grade levels at school. We also teach that whether or not the student is in uniform, he or she wears the belt at all times around his and her heart. This means that at all times and in all places, students are expected to conduct themselves in a way benefiting the level of accomplishment in martial arts training that the student has reached. In particular, as a student advances through the ranks, the tenor of martial arts should become more and more evident in all areas of life. This is the gift martial arts offers your child, fitness of body and mind, and the capability to apply strength of character to every facet of their coming lives, whether that be schoolwork, working life, personal relationships, or their own journey into parenthood. Don't Wash It Away poem by Rita Ethler's Transpersonal Art Therapist, September 2013. Don't wash it away. Your journey, the start, the white and the yellow, held close to your heart. Don't wash it away, the spirit, the soul, or the green and the blue, as you reach for your goal. Don't wash it away, the joys and the tears, of the brown and the black, as you rise above fears. Don't wash it away, all the memories felt. They are with you forever, for they stay in your belt. My own philosophy. There are a lot of philosophies that can guide us through life. Which one you choose is up to you, but I'd like to share the philosophy which keeps me focused on my goal of having the largest martial arts organisation in Australia. Quote, It is not what I can do, but what I can do for you that matters. Master Paul Mitchell. It is important as an instructor to never lose focus of our students. Ever since I started martial arts, people have been asking me to show them what I can do. In the beginning, I demonstrated kicks and punches that I felt were impressive enough to satisfy their curiosity. 35 years later, I'm still being asked the same question. But throughout the years, I focused on offering the opportunity for people to study in art, enjoy their training, and build friendships that will last a lifetime. It may not have been what they were expecting, but I'm proud of who I am and enjoy spending time inspiring people to achieve greatness through belief in themselves. There are not too many instructors who don't feel that way. But of course, there will be a few that, as we say, have their own agenda. These instructors are more concerned about people's perception of themselves. They accept promotions and awards when they should have focused on their own students. You'll know when you meet them. Quote, there is nothing greater than the smile on a child's face when they have achieved something special. In our organisation, we think it is our responsibility to give every child the opportunity. I have not been handicapped by my condition. I'm physically challenged and differently able. Janet Barnes. Chapter 9. Supporting Special Needs. Earlier in this book, I told you about a young boy named Issa and how he changed everyone's lives, including mine. Due to Issa's effort on grading down the St. George area, I was given the opportunity to expand my personal development program, PDP. We call it PDP instead of an anti-bullying program so as not to make the children think we were targeting them as bullies making them take a specific program. That program is now very popular and I hope helping hundreds of children to not use bullying tactics in their daily lives but to focus their energies and spirit into being more respectful of others. Quote, Perception determines response. Story of Thomas When I first started my personal development program at Greenacre Public School I was given 18 children to teach. It was challenging at first as there was mixed abilities and some learning difficulties in the class. The group was divided at first with friends, only wanting to partner their friends. As the program developed though, we moved students around so that we could encourage patience, consideration of others and promote new friendships. At the end of the term I asked my two sons Ben and Alex, who were both black belts, if they would support their father on the last day of the program and take a group of six students each. The demonstration went well and the group in the middle, supervised by me, did all the board breaking. At the end of the demonstration, Thomas, a special needs child from one of the other groups, came to me and politely asked, could I break a board? I asked Ben and Alex if they could get the boards out of the back of the car so that everyone could break. During the breaking work, Thomas stood up for his go. He had several attempts at breaking the boards but couldn't quite get there. Then all of a sudden, six boys out of the group stood up and moved closer to him. They started to gently encourage Thomas with cries of, you can do it, turn your hip more, and kick through the board. It was amazing to see the difference that unconditional support can make to someone. 
Thomas let go of his fears, and after he succeeded in breaking the board, the six students congratulated Thomas with applause, pats on the shoulder, and asked him if he wanted to sit with them. The children at the start of the program only cared about what they could get for themselves. Yet here, we were on one term later, and they had realised it only takes a little kindness to make a huge difference to someone's life. What a gift for later life for all of us in society. The program expanded and I was teaching 230 stage 3 10 to 12 year old children each week. The success of the program was due to a combination effort from teachers, parental support and the belief of a deputy principal who saw the difference martial arts had made to her own daughter. As instructors we understand that a bully wants to be number one and that's alright. They're normally stronger and use their power to dominate. Now when we show them how to get the same results through kindness, leadership and respect for others, we get an exponentially greater result. Special needs. Children with special needs can benefit greatly from being involved in martial arts. I attribute this to the fact that our martial arts programs have the flexibility to take into account the child's progress on an individual basis. We also provide a structured, disciplined and positive environment in a social setting. In other words, our belief and respect for all provides a safe environment for your child. Becoming involved in martial arts will give special needs children the chance to be a part of a group that can work together while at the same time recognising each child's success individually. The ultimate goal is to make martial arts a positive and inclusive experience while providing obtainable and realistic goals. For many parents, the idea of their children taking part in a martial art or combat sport seems wrong. Who in their right mind would willingly let the children learn to fight? As it turns out, martial arts training doesn't genuinely lead to aggressive and violent behaviour. In fact, it tends to do the opposite. Children who practice martial arts like Judo, Taekwondo, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Wrestling, Kung Fu or Karate generally have strong social skills, fight less often and perform well in school. This effect is particularly pronounced in at-risk children or those with special needs. Martial arts has also proven benefits for children with special needs such as autism and Asperger's syndrome. Parents groups and websites covering children with special needs are full of stories and personal anecdotes about the power of structured activities in helping children with autism develop social skills. There was a survey done with special needs children in participating in martial arts training over 11 weeks in America. The instructor noticed marked improvements in cooperative behaviour, balance, eye contact, attention span and play skills. The children in the study also displayed a decreased level of negative social behaviour like acting out or fighting. There are positive effects that martial arts training has on helping children develop respect, confidence, teamwork and self-discipline. These skills developed in karate, judo, taekwondo, aikido, kung fu, jiu-jitsu and tai chi classes transfer into all aspects of everyday life with improvements seen in school performance and social skills. A tribute to Yunnan Taekwondo by Kim Petticost, Lagano Dojang. I'd like to tell the story of two boys, both diagnosed on the autism spectrum. These boys are my sons. My first son Liam, now age 15, was diagnosed with Asperger's Syndrome and ADHD. My second son, Declan, now age 12, was diagnosed with moderate autism. At five years of age, Liam could not play sports in a team, could only parallel play with other children, had no coordination, could not stay still or pay attention in class. Stimming included head banging, jumping up and down flapping his hands, sucking the back of his knuckles until they bled, constant hand movements and having to line things up in order. Declan did not speak until he was nearly six, could not make friends, did not know his colours, had major dietary issues, had little or no eye contact, did not speak to strangers, walk in lines or giant circles having two-way conversations with I'm um, not sure who and had the same jumping up and down and hand flapping as Liam. Everything in his room had a place and if you moved it you had to remember exactly where it was and put it back or there would be a major meltdown. Of course we were devastated but we just rolled up our sleeves and got to work. There was speech therapy, occupational therapy, Dr Underwood, the naturopath autism specialist, the door program, music lessons, tutors, and then my husband Craig decided to try Taekwondo. At five, Liam was out there, always moving around, never paying attention, so it didn't last that long. At six, Craig tried again and took Liam back to Lugano School to instruct the Gary. I remember his first grading. He was so fidgety and happy, and I'm sure he would not be given his yellow belt, but he got it. 
When he came home with the belt, we were so proud. And so it went on. Two nights a week, Craig would go with him and they graded together. We waited for a while for Declan to start Taekwondo. He was eight. By this age, he had a core group of friends who loved him, even though he was different and had grown in confidence. Craig continued to take our boys to Taekwondo every week and they graded together whenever they could. Then a tragedy happened. Craig tore his pectoral muscle and had to have surgery. Craig and Liam had their black tips. I took them to Taekwondo whenever I could and relied on friends to bring them home for me. Craig did return to training for some time, but then started working for himself with very long hours. But the boys considered Taekwondo and at 14, Liam went to the black belt grading. Not sure if he was going to make the grade, but he was determined and he succeeded. I think that was the proudest moment in my life. Declan also achieved his brown tip at the same grading. Watching Master Paul put the black belt embossed with Liam's name on it was so special. Now I've joined the boys on this journey. I have my yellow belt and feel fitter than I have in so many years. Both our sons have improved in everything they do. Liam plays rugby league and is very fast and coordinated. He is lean and strong and has many friends. He is calm and listens and is respectful. He is doing well at school and to watch him stand tall and proud in that front row as a black belt at United Talking of the Ghana is amazing. I still pinch myself. There is nothing of the stimming left. Declan has friends, can make new ones, has fantastic eye contact, speaks well, learns his pattern fast, is coordinated can participate in school sports now. He has very little of the stimming left and has graded to his brown belt. He is a beautiful soul and loves participating in Taekwondo. I am told there is no cure for autism, but I'm not so sure. I'm so incredibly proud of my sons and immensely grateful to United Taekwondo, to instructor Gary Thigood, an amazing instructor, mentor, a wonderful patient man, to Master Paul, Chief Instructor John and Instructor Kale, who all have played a huge part in my boy's successful transition from special needs to hardly any needs, and to Nicole Barn and Alex who support and encourage, and to my husband Craig, who I am hoping will come back soon. I know this is a long story, but I hope it inspires and encourages people to consider talking over their families. You'll never regret it. Eight important tips for working with a special needs child. As the population of children with special needs continues to grow, more and more scout leaders, soccer coaches, religion education instructors, librarians, music teachers and other adults are finding themselves working with these children for the first time. Many of these adults are volunteers who generously give their time and expertise. Others are highly trained in the field but have little or no knowledge of disabilities. Here are eight important tips you can pass on to people who will be working with your special child. If you feel so inclined, you can even give them a copy of this book. 1. Interact. The biggest mistake that adults make when they meet someone with special needs is failing to interact with them. What will often happen is an initial approach is seemingly rebuffed by the child and the adult, not expecting such a reaction gives up. Firstly, introduce yourself and explain why you will be interacting with them in whatever capacity it is. Depending on your child's special needs, it may be necessary to take your child's hand place a hand on the child's shoulder or even touch each other's face to make a proper introduction. You might ask for advice from a parent at this stage as to whether touching is appropriate or whether they will react badly. Then explain the activity that you'll be doing with the child. Explain the different steps of the activity including the beginning and the end while making as much eye contact as possible. 2. Observe. Some children with special needs see things in a very different way. According, they may feel discomfort that you don't see or feel and you need to be aware of this, particularly if they are unable to verbalise discomfort. Remember that all behaviour is communication. Always keep a look out for these differences and think about what the child's behaviour is communicating to you. If you're not sure what you're seeing, ask the child's parents or an adult for advice. 3. Parents. You understand your child best and know that they like to feel safe. So if you are coming to a martial arts class, speak to the instructor and see how best to make the environment safe in an emotional context. In class, you may need to be near your child while they are learning or even helping them with guidance from the instructor about correct technique. Four, be flexible. Some classes imply that they will not change the way they do things to accommodate one person in a group. This is fine if all students have equal abilities, but that of course is never the case. Modern teaching philosophies is to use a variety of methods to help the individuals understand and master new skills. For example, 
The child refuses to let go of a parent, bring the parent into activity for a few minutes to reduce the anxiety and then fade out the parent. If the child does not have the appropriate motor skills for an activity, help the child go through the motions and assign a buddy to help the child practice on the sidelines for a few minutes. 5. Be consistent. If a set of rules is present to the group, everyone needs to apply those rules consistently. An example may be that if a special needs child is having difficulty in understanding a command, then the parent needs to be waved in to support that child. When the child sees the help they are getting, plus the expectations that they will need to perform the instruction, a better with assistance than a positive result usually occurs. Contrast that with the likely outcome where the child is squirming because they are having trouble understanding and the instructor says to the child, if you keep moving you will have to leave. This is unlikely to stop the child squirming. The instructor should wave the parent in as agreed. 6. Use visual, auditory or tactile cues. In our dojang, we have found that having the right cues in any environment can mean the difference between participation and non-participation for many children with special needs. Bringing a camera to the activity a special needs child will be participating in and taking shots on a regular routines and favourite places. You can compile the shots into an album that encourage familiarity with the environment or the activities. Other instructors have found success by using index cards with simple written instructions to help the child remember the rules for appropriate behaviour. If reading is a problem, substitute a hand-drawn cartoon or other pictures for words. Tactile clues such as gentle touching a person's shoulder, bending down to make eye contact or other signals that make a transition will help the instructor get the child's attention. This is better than grabbing and moving the child around. Whatever the instructor chooses, it should be consistent. 7. Have a plan and a backup plan. You know what they say about the best laid plans. In words to special needs, there is always a plan B and usually a plan C. Every instructional environment should have a space to calm down and move freely within if things go badly. I advise instructors to think about what each participant can do instead of focusing on what they can't contribute. 8. Be positive. A positive attitude is the single most important quality for anyone who works with children with special needs. Our frustrations are sometimes easily read by special needs children and this will not help you at all. You never understand the love of a parent until you become a parent yourself. Chapter 10. As a parent, what can I do? Martial arts gives us all the framework for raising great children. You can join in from home and exemplify the lessons while nurturing all the lessons that martial arts shows the child. Story of Kobe Recently a young family joined Natokondo and MacArthur area. Straight away I noticed something special about the connection between the parents and the children. Stefan, father and Summer, daughter, were the first to join. Summer was only seven and in the beginning we had to give her a bit more attention. While we were doing this, we had noticed Susan's mother and Kobe's son watching every move intently that Stefan and Summer were doing. When they got home, a later found out the whole family would practice together, even Kobe, who was only four years old. When they returned to training the next lesson, I saw a huge improvement in Summer, but also Kobe was showing a greater interest. One night, Kobe came up to me and asked politely if he could please join in. I said, let's see how we go. So look for a low risk opportunity where Kobe could join in with the main class. This included punching the mitts, kicking a bag, and a bit of running, anything where he could be having fun. What was special was that Kobe would ask every lesson, could I join in? And so I began to include him in the basic blocks and kicks. His mother would not be far away and would be giving instruction and encouragement from the sideline. If at any stage throughout the night I felt that Kobe needed to sit down, he would always bow, say thank you, and move to the side with his mum. One night, Kobe asked me, Can I get a uniform? I said, When you become a member. He said, Can I join? I said, I'll ask the class at the end of the lesson. At the end of the lesson, I said to the existing members, Is Kobe able to join? And everyone said yes in a loud voice. I turned to Kobe and said, Chumbi, meaning ready position. Chariot, meaning attention. Pay respects to your new class. Kunyi, meaning bow. What made it special was that his parents worked patiently with Kobe for months to help him achieve this goal. But what was more special was seeing the smile on Kobe's face when I helped him put on his uniform. Kobe is now a yellow belt and passed his first grading just after he turned five. Active or passive. Parents can train with their child in an active role and or a passive role. 
Here's some helpful tips on how to help a child succeed and develop in their martial arts journey from white belt to becoming a recognized black belt. Parents can take an active role by traveling a class with a child. Let them teach you what they know to help them practice and feel empowered. Leading by example, eat healthily, drink water, stay active and have a positive attitude. Deal with your stress and the challenges the same way you'd like your child to. Following and encourage the rules and regulations. Bow at the door when entering and leaving the dojang. Making yourself available to watch your child at least two thirds of the time. Get involved. Be your child's number one fan and cheerleader. Kids with parents who get involved are less likely to drop out of martial arts, so try to avoid just dropping the kids off. Parents can take a passive role by always complimenting your child after class. Children should always associate martial arts with feelings of success and pride. Attending gradings and bring relatives and friends, your child has put in a lot of dedication to achieve their next level, so celebrate their achievement with them. Helping with their martial arts homework. Watch the DVDs supplied, ensure they are practicing the patterns and other moves at least twice a week at home. If your child has questions, encourage them to come to class with some questions for their instructor. Getting into a regular schedule as much as possible so children can mentally prepare for class straight after school. Leave the TV off after school, especially before martial arts. Leaving the phone in the car, give yourself a break from it for the duration of the class. Always inviting interaction with members and their families, especially parents. At the conclusion of the lesson, please feel free to ask questions of the instructor about your child's progress. However, be mindful of time constraints. Also, a kind, positive word of the instructor is always very much appreciated as they are doing their best for your child. Ensuring all who attend a martial arts dojo have an enjoyable, rewarding experience that will have a positive influence on those training in martial arts for their entire life. Website support. Finally, here are some great websites to visit. www.takeastandtogether.gov.au www.stopcyberbullying.org www.girlshealth.gov and www.bullyingnoway.com.au Visiting these sites with your child will build their confidence by showing them you are supportive and the bullying is not acceptable and will not be tolerated. My strength did not come from lifting weights. My strength came from lifting myself up when I was knocked down. Chapter 11, five strategies to deal with bullying. Sometimes you don't have the luxury of looking ahead and stopping something before it happens. Bullying may well be happening for you right now. So the following gives you some ideas of how to fight bullying. Strategy one, what is bullying? Bullying is when people repeatedly and intentionally use words or actions against someone or a group of people to cause the stress and risk to their well-being. These actions are usually done by people who have more influence or power over someone else or who want to make someone else feel less powerful or helpless. Bullying can happen in many places. It can have many triggers such as religion, disability, gender, sexual orientation, gender identity or anything else that makes people different. Most people experience bullying at some stage in their life. As an adult, I find that being bullied happens less as you get older. Perhaps it's because you learn to deal with it better, or as an adult, you learn just to brush it off. Or maybe the bullying just gets more subtle. Unfortunately, the same thing can't be said for children. As parents, we need to help our child deal with and understand what bullying is about. Recognize the signs of bullying. Is your child being bullied? Bullying and cyberbullying can happen to any child wherever children congregate whether that be at school, in the playground, or online. All research indicates that obese, shy, depressed, minority, and special needs children experience a higher likelihood of being bullied. It's important to note that even though your child may not fit into one of those profiles, they still could become a victim. Bullying is a highly emotional subject for children and parents. If you think your child may be bullied, the next step is to encourage them to talk about it. Explain what bullying is to your child first and ask them if they ever witnessed or experienced it. Understand, however, that the majority of children don't tell parents or adults about bullying. The following signs may indicate that your child is being bullied. When your child comes home, he or she is moody or sad and afraid of going to school or gathering with other children. Pieces of your child's clothing or other belongings are torn or missing. Your child has unexplained bruises, cuts or scratches. Your child seems anxious or insecure. 
it is most important that you as a parent talk about bullying with your children. Even if the signs are not there, explain bullying to your child may help them in turn pass on the information to others. Strategy 2. Am I a bully? It is also important to recognise when our own children may be exhibiting bullying behaviour. This is of course difficult to take on board in our own family, but a strong parent recognises that every child needs guidance from time to time. We all have a responsibility to deal with bullying, whether it's close to home or not. How do you ascertain whether your child is exhibiting bullying behaviour? Ask your child in a non-accusing manner the following questions and ask them to be honest with themselves. Your goal here is not to accuse and reproach, it is to discover behaviour signals and then guide them to a different way of thinking. Do you make mean faces or hand signals to each other? Do you spread rumours or say something mean about others behind their back? Do you often make fun of or tease others? Do you whisper secrets to a friend in front of another person and not share that secret with him or her on purpose? Have you purposely not invited someone to hang out with you or your friends? Have you ever been or currently a part of a clique that is exclusive about who you can or cannot be friends with and has not let others join in? Do you make fun of others because they are different from you and your friends? Have you ever threatened to hurt someone? Have you ever punched, shoved or hit another boy or girl? Did they answer yes to any of these examples? If they did, then you'll need to assess the degree of the behaviour and come up with a plan to drive different behaviours. This may include assessing your own behaviours. Yes, this is hard. The outcome will be better for you and your children. Say the word bully and most people think of a thug. No one likes to be thought of being a bully, but their ability to frighten other children makes them somehow larger than life. Just about any child may be drawn into it, and over the course of a childhood, almost all children are affected. Most people think that bullies have low self-esteem. In fact, often the bullies feel good about bullying, especially if it makes him popular or feared at school. Bullies often possess one or two distinctive types of personality, dominant, the alpha male or female, or seeking dominance via humiliation, as they have low self-esteem. Research suggests that parents of bullies show some common traits, a lack of time for, an interest in, the child's earliest years, too much tolerance or aggressive behaviour, and frequently use of physical punishment for discipline. Some bullies will not even understand how wrong the behaviour is and how it makes the person being bullied feel. One of the things that surprises many bullies is that if you want to be more popular, helping others who are being bullied goes a long way. How can I stop my child from being a bully? People who bully others often find it hard to ask for help. They may be worried that they'll get into trouble with their teachers or that they'll be bullied themselves. This means that they'll have to firstly notice the behaviour and secondly take steps to bring it under control. It takes courage to help stop your child being a bully. You think it becomes a judgement on how you are as a parent, but the truly better parent is the one who weathers all the storms, good and bad, in raising of their children. The simple fact is that you want to take action proves that you're a good parent. Here's what to do. Assess the behaviour and make a decision. Direct the child in a non-threatening way to question their behaviour. Ask for help yourself from many anti-bullying groups that exist. Help with bullying is not only available to those who have been bullied. Many anti-bullying support groups also help people who are involved in bullying. Talk to a teacher or an older pupil who your child gets on well with. Can they also help with guidance and role modelling? If there's any support system in your school for those who are being bullied, for example, a teacher who is designated to deal with bullying, they should be able to help you too. Some schools have peer support schemes where older children are trying to help younger children deal with bullying. Peer support is usually available to children and young people who say they are bullies. Look at the root cause of why your child is bullying and address low self-esteem or bad peer groups. Why do people bully others? There are many reasons why people bully others. It may be that they are unhappy and they take it out on someone else. Many people who bully have low self-esteem and bullying can be a way of coping with it. In some cases, people who bully are also being bullied themselves. Others are encouraged by their friends to bully and they do it because they don't want to be left out. Some people pick on others because they are looking for attention or because they are feeling jealous. Quote, when you offer support for other people, you will find more strength in friendship. Strategy 3. Is your child a victim of bullying? Quote, use your smile to change the world. Don't let the world change your smile. 
Some children live in an enormous fear of bullies. It can be so bad that their sleep, appetite and health suffers and they become depressed. If a child is always a target, chances are that he or she needs to learn how to avoid contact with bullies, look for a different route home from school, swap classes, try to have them attend different class times, assert the message for the bully to back off if confronted. This is where martial arts is handy. Stop aggravating bullies, however innocently. Tell your child to stop interacting with them completely if at all possible. Learn some self-defense tactics as a backup, but be warned advertised skills attract challenges. Again, martial arts will teach self-defense and general conflict avoidance strategies. Whatever the tactics, the message must be that bullying is not acceptable. Bullies have a tendency to pick on victims by force, who they feel are not capable of retaliating or cannot handle remarks that they are made. In order to decrease the person's self-esteem, the best defense is not attack, but a strengthening of a child's inner resources. Bullying takes away self-confidence in a child, and this can lead to more health problems, including stress, anxiety, loss of appetite, lack of interest in activities, and in some serious cases, has led to suicide. The message here is that you must take it seriously and do all you can to help your child. The most important thing to do about bullying is to tell someone. Your child may be afraid of the bully, but your message to the child is for them to never be afraid of talking to someone about it. Parents in particular, if your child is being bullied, you should be the first to respond and seek help. All schools are very aware of bullying and have programs in place to assist you. Once again, if you're not successful, then don't give up until you get results. Strategies to help yourself, a child's perspective. If you think your child is being bullied but is reluctant to involve you, have them read this section. It may help them formulate a strategy to solve their issues. There are lots of ways to stop being bullied, but believe it or not, yelling at the top of your voice, back off, is one of the most effective ways to stop someone bullying you. It throws a spotlight back onto the bully, and in doing so, can embarrass the person in front of others. It can also make them realize that their actions are that of a bully. Remember, some people don't know that they are bullying. If you don't feel you have the confidence to do this, then you need to look at other options that may suit you better. Tell someone, if you've been keeping things to yourself, a situation may appear to be overwhelming than it actually is. The person you tell may help you see the situation in a new or different perspective. Someone outside the situation will be able to be more neutral about what is going on. They may suggest options that you had never thought of before. Talking through your concerns can also release a lot of pent-up tension and give you new insights into what is going on. It works, so please do it. Other important things to remember, once you tell someone that you trust about being a victim of bullying and it still continues, talk to someone else until you get a positive response and the bullying stops. Of course, talking to someone else happens after the event. Here are some strategies to try when you're actually being bullied. These should be only tried if you're not in any immediate danger of being physically hurt and you feel confident that you can do them. Ignore the bully and walk away. Act unimpressed or pretend you don't care what they say or do to you. You could say, okay, whatever, and walk away. Use some strategies like fogging to discourage the person bullying without antagonizing them. Fogging is a technique that distracts the bully. You can give the bully a funny comment that makes them think you don't care about what they say. Finally, it is most important to work on building self-confidence in yourself. When you feel very good about yourself, it is very hard for others to make you feel bad because a comment seems so silly or untrue. If you're being bullied because you are the smart one at school, keep on being smart. They're just jealous. If you look different, develop some sports skills or come along to a martial arts class, ask your mum and dad to help you find a solution. Remember, bullying is a major issue and no matter where you are or who you are, help is just around the corner. Strategy 4 the bystander. Quote, if you turn your face the other way when someone is being bullied, you might as well be the bully too. Bystanders can react in different ways when they see or know about bullying. Generally, they're other children. Ask your children to read this section so that they know that they can do something about bullying, especially if it happens to a friend. Some bystanders take the side of the bully by laughing at the victim, encouraging the bully, or by passing on text messages or messages on social media sites like Facebook and YouTube. Some bystanders will give silent approval or encourage the bully by looking on. Some bystanders may watch or know about the bullying but don't do anything. They might not know what to do or are scared. 
This group of bystanders knows that bullying is not okay, and some bystanders will be supportive and take a safe action to stop the bully, find help or support the victim. Strategies to help your friend. Quote, where there is unity, there is strength. When you stick together, you can overcome anything. If you have a friend or someone who needs your help, there are actions you can take. Refuse to join in if you see someone being bullied. It can be hard to resist if a bully tries to get you to taunt or torment someone, and you may fear the bully will turn on you if you do not participate, but try to stand firm. Make it clear to your friends that you won't be involved in bullying behaviour. Attempt to defuse bullying situations when you see them starting up. For example, try to draw attention away from the targeted person, or take the bully aside and ask him or her to cool it. Do not place yourself at risk, however. If you can do so without risk to your own safety, get a teacher, parent or other responsible adult to come and help you immediately. Do not harass, tease or spread gossip about others. Never forward or respond to messages or photos that may be offensive or upsetting. If bullying is serious, report it to the police. If bullying occurs on Facebook, report it to Facebook. Speak up and or offer support to bullying victims when you witness bullying. For example, helping them up if they have been tripped or knocked down. If you feel you cannot do this at the time, privately support those being hurt with words of kindness and condolence later. Encourage bullied victims to talk with parents or a trusted adult. Offer to go with the person if it would help. Tell an adult yourself if the victim is unwilling to report the bullying. If necessary for your safety, do this anonymously. Strategy 5. Steps you can take to help your child. If your child has been a victim of bullying, they may feel reluctant to tell you about it. They may clam up, but gently persuade them it's okay to tell you about it and that you won't go storming off to the other child's parents. What you will do, of course, is understand that your child still has to go to school with the other child or children but you'll ensure steps are taken at the school to stop the issue. Most schools these days are very capable when it comes to stopping bullying. Of course, children have to learn to cope with the good, the bad and the ugly. That's life. But feeling bullied makes learning unattainable, disagreeable and downright painful. For parents, a child coming home clearly upset and distraught from an incident at school is confronting. A sound piece of advice is to work with the school. Don't rush into phone calls with other parents. What to do after a bullying incident? Firstly, you need to determine whether the incident is in fact bullying. Unfortunately, what we once considered teasing is now called bullying. There are always two sides of a story. Listen to all the information from your child, bearing in mind that his or her perception may not be the same as the other child's. The incident may have been bullying, or your child may have been involved in a dispute over a decision. If it is a one-off incident, confront your child and talk them through the situation together, looking for ways to solve the problem. It's important that the parents don't take over and allow the child to solve the problem themselves. If it is bullying, action needs to be taken. Children don't want to trouble parents with their problems, so you may not find out about the bullying until well into the bullying cycle. Comfort your child and tell him or her that you won't allow the bullying to continue. Talk to the teacher with your child in a three-way discussion to come up with a solution that has the greatest support and awareness of all parties, then organise a review. Research shows that the best way to deal with bullying is to get bystanders to stand up and do what is right. This is best done by a class coming up with its own code of conduct. This way, the children assert their own rules for their behaviour, that is, they learn to take ownership and responsibility. Parents should support their children by following up on reported bullying incidents. Having the support of your parents and another adult is a good confidence booster for the children. It is important to support your child as they may lack the skills and confidence to deal with the bullying issue on their own. People who are bullied are victims and need support from people who care. Longer term additional strategies. What else can you do? The biggest and best strategy lies in giving your child self-confidence and self-belief. When they have the inner strength and see bullies for what they are, scared people, then the impact is not nearly so great. Building confidence. Being shy, not having the ability to communicate with others and low self-esteem are perfectly normal for the majority of children, in some cases adults. The easiest way to build confidence in children is to encourage them in whatever they do, sport, school, work, parents, etc. Find something they show promise in, in any endeavor and encourage that interest. We all need something we excel at to take our place in society. 
An example, I was approached by a parent who wanted their child to join in the Taekwondo class. I was informed that the child had been constantly bullying at school and they wanted their child to learn how to fight. I redetected their intentions by saying, we teach self-defense and our focus is on learning to be disciplined, increase self-esteem, and above all, increasing self-confidence. The child joined anyway, and today that child is an outstanding Inataikono student who has been promoted on three occasions. He no longer has bullying issues. Building self-confidence in the student was the biggest contributing factor. The difference is astounding because now the student has self-confidence and is thriving at school. First aid for bullying, in person, by phone or on the internet. If you are not physically in danger, try to stay calm. Try not to respond. Showing that you are scared or angered by reacting will feed the situation and give the bully what they want. Don't respond to messages. Putting energy in the situation will keep it going. Understand that the person who is bullying you has a big problem themselves. Block the cyberbully on your phone or internet site. Tell a trusted adult and ask for help. Finally, let them know that if they need assistance, they can go to their local martial arts centre and speak to their instructor. A final thought. Bullying is an insidious disease in our society because of the impact it has in an early age on the children's ability to learn and make friendship. The long-term impacts are equally bad. The answer for me and for many of my students has been martial arts. It doesn't matter which martial art, but I strongly advocate learning one of them to build self-confidence. The key is to help a child generate a fantastic sense of self-belief. Martial arts does this in a structured, safe environment. Your child will become fitter, stronger and healthier. They'll be able to defend themselves, but more importantly, they will have a good role models and the capacity to respect and contribute to society in a meaningful way. What a wonderful gift for life that is.